we uh and that is also our streamer so i will be trying to stream today there's no beautiful um overlay there's no light up uh tokens to designate who's speaking um you're just gonna have to stumble through and try your best um people who are watching uh, by now you should know everyone's iconic voices uh some of which have been nominated for a golden voice award not not really um all right so before we recap what happened last time does anybody have a cool cutscene featuring their character they want to share else we will hit up the uh faxpiration document all right we got some rolls. Rolls appeared in chat. Uh, let's see. We got a two from Bellinora and 11 from Ketrin. All right, going once, going twice. All right, Ketrin. Uh, paint the picture for us. Do you need different music or? Um, I don't know, maybe. You got old timey music? We're doing a flashback. It's a big flashback. Oh, uh, okay, let's see. Old timey music extended. Um, we got old-timey mountain roots Americana music. We got songs playing from the radio nestled in the corner of our 1940s living room. <laughs> um, I don't, I think there might be, uh, I'm going to put instrumental only. Hold on. Instrumental. Okay. We got instrumental favorites of the 40s. Uh, that sounds pretty old-timey. Sure. It was, sure. It was an all right decade. Nothing to write home about. It was okay. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and switch out the music, set the scene. There we go. Eh? I like it. Okay. I like it. We can do it. All right. Okay. Okay, so, uh, I was gonna write something down for this, but then I didn't, so I'm gonna wing it. So all right. we'll, we'll do our best. Okay. Um, so... Uh, we're, we're doing one of those flashback scenes where, like, you get a freeze frame on Ketrin, and then pages start flapping back, and they flap really fast, and there's a whole bunch of them, because we're going 200 years into the past. Oh my god, um, alright. And, and you see a, uh, a beautiful lady dwarf with brilliant blonde hair in lovely blades. She is svelte. She is muscular. Um, she is in a shining, fancy armor, um, doing a Captain Morgan phase on the bridge over Alkenstar, mm -hmm. looking over into uh, all the, you know, this wretched hive of scum and villainy um, that she is going to fix and make better. Um, and then we montage to her walking through the Ferris quarter, and she sees a small child uh, that appears to be wounded, begging along the side of the road. Oh. And she is moved by the poor child's plight, and she leans down to heal the child with her lay on hands, because she is licensed and allowed to do that. Oh. Um, and then... Uh, the, the child's like, no, don't do that, and, like, tries to run away, and she's like, no, it's okay, I, I will protect you and help you, um, and then she tries to heal the child, and then she discovers that the child is not actually injured, the child is pretending to be injured, um, and also, she seems to not have her purse anymore. Um, and she turns around, and then there's another child running off with her purse, and then when she turns back around, the other child that she tried to heal is gone. Um, and she is very mad. Um, then she she chases off after the children, um, manages to catch them because she is athletic dwarf lady, um, and uh, like kind of uh, there's like four or five of them at this point. She corners them in an alleyway and gives them a speech about how evil it is to steal, and they need to. Um, give back the all the things that they stole. Um, and then um, before the children can respond, a, uh, you know, sort of a uh, adult outlaw kind of quarters her in the alleyway, um, along with some thugs, and it's a gang, 
and uh, they're like, this ain't no concern of yours, lady. And then he makes them all, all the poor kids give up their, their stealings um, so that they can, you know, trade it for food. And then they, all the kids just glare at her and kind of wander off. And, and Ketrin has a moment where she feels real sad. Um, so then uh, another time goes by. We're doing a montage thing. So mm-hmm. then... Um, we see Ketra bust down the door of a this kind of old flimsy shack, like the back room of a tavern, and she has caught all of this gang as a surprise, and she goes in there, and she basically just slaughters all the gang members because she is a white knight, and she kills evildoers, and that's what she does. And then... She looks to the children and she's like, it's okay now, you're free, you won't have to steal for them anymore. And then the kids are like, no, why did you do that? They fed us, now who's going to feed us? Mm. And poor Ketrin is just dumbfounded. And all the kids are mad and they wander off. And then we get one more little flash forward and we see a much more defeated Ketrin standing outside of a ramshackle building and handing over her sword to a landlord to pay rent on the building and all of the kids are behind her and she's like come on i'll feed you now okay and 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 that's kind of where it leads to the modern day of your orphanage and not using magic to heal and you know all that kind of stuff gotcha 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 okay beautiful uh, go ahead and take a. Uh, I'll put a fact factspiration on there, so you have that D3 you can add to either hit or confirm a crit. There we go. All right. So, uh, would anybody for a third hero point like to sum up uh, what happened last week? It's been a long week, one might say. All right. We got an eight from Bellinora going once. We're going twice. Uh, Bellinora the savvy. Uh, you are up. What yeah, happened? No one wants to steal this job. Right. Uh, <laughs> I do for we, a hero point. I'll do a fucking anything. I'm like Scooby Doo, man, for a Scooby I snack. I will do anything for a hero point. Yeah. I will debase myself publicly. Yeah. All right. All right. Last session, we open to the last leg of our mission to save and extract the holder of the Pyronite formula and my romanceable NPC, Vashon Gattleby. Mm-hmm. The session began mid combat along the banks of the Ustradi River at a location where the sewers drained out. We fought a handful of oozes, uh, much to our delight, found them to be manageable. And it turns out things with uh, the trait called weak uh, are actually, you know, pretty handleable. So, um,. Once routed, uh, the Leshy we now know as Potato emerged from the pipes, injured from the evening they spent navigating the maze-like tunnels. He explains the where uh, that Werats attacked them, taking Roxy and Bashan ransom, and motivated by the desire to save Roxy, their last remaining friend, Potato agreed to give up on killing Bashan and help us track down the Werats. Uh, we were led through the sewers to the hideout where we narrowly avoided an ambush thanks to Ketrin's quick thinking. We didn't waste time with negotiations. Uh, combat kicked off right away as we entered the room. Uh, several were rats fired upon us with crossbows as giant rats, rats rushed up to bite. The battle was largely a success. Uh, we had one close call with Ketrin going down, but I was able to rescue her. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, Luck was not on Stack the Deck's side, as he, uh, he was bitten and unable to ward off the curse of the Lycanthrope, and has begun transforming into a Were-Rat. Uh, in spite of these challenges, we were able to wear them down quick enough where they surrendered. Uh, they relinquished Vashon, Slick, and Roxy to us, and wished us no hard feelings. In spite of my grievances with the man, I was very relieved to find Vashon alive and unharmed. Uh, Roxy was so lost after the death of Dewey and grateful to be rescued uh, from being sold to Nexon boat, uh, bit poachers that she has decided to become Discretion's sidekick, whereas Potato has de- uh, designated himself as Discretion's side sidekick. Um, with everything concluded, we returned to the Barrel and Bullet for some much needed rest. It was tough to tell if Phoebe was impressed or just shocked that we managed to pull it off, but she congratulated us and paid us for our success. Afterwards, she told us our next mission is to explore the activities of the Powder Punk Gang and their sudden rise to power. 
In order to do so, we will need to seek out uh, their the headquarters at the Powderhorn Saloon, I think it was, as well as seek information at the Longhorn Lounge, where they were recently sighted. And in order to do so, to get into the Longhorn Lounge, we will need to prove ourselves as rodeo stars. And as luck would have it, there uh, are open tryouts for a local rodeo that we can go to and uh, earn this accolade. Mm. Um, yeah, and that kind of leaves us at the end of the session. Vashon was given the night to say goodbye in what was likely one of the most awkward faded blacks ever, given our communal sleeping arrangement. <laughs> and when uh, I awoke the next day, he was gone, taking my formula for Pyronite with him. Once he uh, is placed into productive, protective custody, history will reflect that it, it was his invention. A fragment of truth buried in a lie, but, you know, for all the trouble it's caused him, perhaps this was for the best. All right, beautiful. Go ahead and take your third hero point and third hero card draw. And with that, <clears throat> we are ready to resume the adventure. Now, we had discussed last week that um, there is a, a rodeo um, arena, essentially, and some of the things you could do there, um, that one of you has a contact already at the Longhorn Lounge, <clears throat> and that there are... Um, other leads as well, um, including a uh, an incident near Blythier College by uh, Ria's Reagents, a upscale um, Reagents alchemy supply and bookstore, and uh, that overall, the government they want you to find out why such a disorganized gang of uh, pyromaniacs is suddenly so organized and uh trying to take down essentially what was a pretty you know a pretty high profile um government vip you may have heard vashon galbuza government vip um so it doesn't sit well with phoebe like why why are these guys that usually the worst thing they do is set off a bomb you know you know once in a while or start a few fires in abandoned buildings why are they suddenly so organized uh, what's what's the situation there? So, um, let us go ahead and resume that investigation. You can tackle it in any way, any order you want, any direction you want. Um, this is uh, about as many sandboxes we're going to get in this rather linear adventure. Which, if you've played Final Fantasy 16, it don't, it don't, not bad. You know, linear's not bad. Linear doesn't mean it's a bad game. Um, but this is certainly the most like choose your own adventure part uh, of book one at least. So you guys kind of tell me what you want to do and how you want to proceed. I'll change the music out. Mm -mm -mm. Also, for anybody in stream, if any of the sound is bad, like the music's too loud or the people are too low, when you stream, you have to set the levels differently. Um, so I have it where it's comfortable for me, but if I need to blast somebody so that people can hear, just let me know. All right. So, um, City of Alcazar, what do you guys want to get up to? Well, we have three leads to chase down. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you want to check the lounge first, or do you want to... I'm just going to say that I think the easiest lead to follow up on is probably the alchemy shop. We don't have to prove anything to go there. We can just go ask some questions and then move on. That's fair. But that, and then we could either follow up on Vulture's lead or we could become rodeo stars, which I think we should do personally. Or you, some of you should do. I don't actually... <laughs> also, we should go to the East of All Breweries and find our horse. Ooh, I'm going to go to your player folder real quick, and I guess since time has passed, you'll need fresh disguises. So, while mm. you guys are deciding your course of action, I will go and apply uh, some disguises here. Mm. Vulture, who's this contact you have? I see Vulture's in chat. Is Vulture available to, to answer? It's a friend of Sydney. Socialite who works or not well, she does kind of work there as well. Uh, but someone who's got a little, little bit of money. 
Sounds like a good friend hey. to have. Mm -mm. We do not have a lot of money. <laughs> I spent all my money on re recipes this week. That's the Pathfinder way. Stay what safe freaking... and stay hungry. What are you cooking now? Who? What, what? kind of recipes you got? Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh. Yeah, what are your new recipes, uh, Party Alchemist? All of them. All of them. No, oh, uh, no. I got mo mo the moderates. Uh, I say, now have... pricey. <laughs> no, I mean, they're only three gold apiece. Uh, right. So, yeah, now I'm able to bring to bear the moderates, Alchemist Fire, Bottle of Lightning, Lightning Flask, Dwarven Daisies, Thunderstones, uh, Blight Bombs, and Goo Grenades. But then I have, uh, for discretion and stack, I have the leveled up Silver Tongue Mutagen. And, oh, fun. This I forgot I got this. I was really stoned. Uh, Diplomat's Charcuterie, which mm -hmm. I thought was just delightful. Diplomat's that's Charcuterie. That's, that's amazing. That one. <clears throat> this is normal charcuterie board, or is there something... This is a special charcuterie board that you can get uh, bonuses to your... Uh, pers I can't post it for some reason. Why is, why is it alchemical? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If like a lab, if like a lab worker came to me. All right, like a I'm gonna board. I'm gonna put it out there. Cooking and baking is an alchemical process. That's for sure. But making a charcuterie board, I don't know. I mean, I guess it really comes down to the condiments. Is yeah. that yeah? All right, let's see what your disguises right. are for today's investigations. Maybe that will change how you feel. Uh, Vulture, you are a mysterious woman in a fedora. Mm. I'm jealous. All right, uh, Bellinora, you are a <laughs> small human child. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Wait, it could change size. Oh, oh no, no, no. Well, that means no, if just... one of you got this small human child and you were seven feet tall, it'd be a seven foot tall human child. That'd be terrifying, but That's I am terrifying. appropriately sized. All right, uh, discretion. Hey, discretion. This guy didn't work. Hold on a sec. Uh, let me see. Um. Ah, oh, oh my. Yours is, uh, an Italian diplomat. Incredible. All right. Oh, uh, Hell yeah. All right, let's see. Katrin. Apparently there is an Italy here in this, uh, this world. It is called Pixel? Prixel? Paxel? I'm still trying to figure it out. But it is Evil Italy. Uh, and it is, uh... In, um, what is it called? Kingmaker. Katrin, you are this lovely aristocratic woman who is also an inventor and has uh, big goals, lofty dreams. Uh, and Stack, you are... Wait, yours didn't change either. Hold on. Uh, let's see. These things are going to fight me the whole campaign. And then at the very end, someone will be like, why didn't you use this mod? It's perfect. I'll be like, uh... Yes. I tried writing a code for it, but it's too hard to, like, update the code, so... Alright, so Stack, you are... a dragon dude. Wow. That's gonna stand out. There really aren't a lot of dragon dudes in, uh... <laughs> in Galarian, so... Uh... Good times. Alright. Also, you became unlinked to your actor, so I should probably fix that. There we go. This must be exciting for you, Discretion. You have a dragon friend. Yeah, at least if you look like that, people probably aren't going to try and kill you for your bits. Yeah, you could just be a lizard who got, like, elective cosmetic surgery, like a lizard folk who just, you know, <laughs> is like, yeah, I'm gonna really milk this dragon angle. This is this is who I identify as deep down. So, Or with the new, like, half and half rules, maybe you're, like, a lizard folk slash minotaur. Oh, oh man. No. That's that's kind of dope. This art in the folder for a future character. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with your disguises in place, what are you up to today? I will take you wherever you want to go in the city. Uh, well, I guess we should go to the the alchemist wants to check out the alchemy shop. Right. So, All right. Between... You you want to start at the alchemy shop? Yeah. All right. Now, if you 
if you want to do the rodeo at any point, you would need to swing by today to sign up to do it. And then we'll just conveniently have it be the the following day. So I think that we should just do that first then. Let's just sign up and then go to the alchemy store. Okay. So you guys head over to the um you guys head over to the rodeo arena. Uh and there they offer up a variety of things that you could uh, participate in um, so the question is um, first and foremost they want to know do you have a team of five because that's how many you have to have to do barrel guard which is our premier event and no one has been brave enough to sign up for barrel guard yet uh, and that's the one where you defend barrels from bulls or uh, from a triceratops first? yeah yeah I mean, action economy-wise, sounds pretty easy. It's just, you know, there's no Paragon or Legendary Actions here. As long as you keep the Triceratops busy, it shouldn't affect the barrels. But beat by wasps. Yeah, but there's a lot of wasps. There's only one Triceratops. Is, is magic allowed? Uh, it's, it's, um... <laughs> it's certainly discouraged, unless you are a licensed, uh... A licensed wielder. Well, I mean, some of us are licensed wielders of magic, but... But you'd have to come out and reveal who you are to use your license. <laughs> yeah. In a very public, very crowded uh, place. Oh, uh, it's not like everyone knows the, all the match. Okay. Yeah, that's what registered means. <laughs> like, well, it's like, like I don't. <laughs> it, you, the sky itself doesn't change the name on the card. Um... Plus, if you don't match, you know, your ID for casting spells, how are they? I mean, you see there's some, some issues there. So. Um, though I have been informed that the licensing, there's actually a, a bracelet that you guys wear that allows them to kind of track this stuff easier. I don't know how that works without magic, but allegedly that is, there is some kind of bracelet that you wear to, uh, to signify that you have this, um, this setup. So maybe there's like a code on the bracelet that they like feed into like a, like a database or something. I, I don't know. Steampunk stuff. Um... The other things are um, mounted marksman, barrel racing, um, steer wrestling, and uh, tie down roping. Now, technically, uh, one person can bring one guest into the Longhorn Lounge if they are a rodeo champion. So you would want, I don't know how many people you'd want, all five of you? Or you'd want like three of you and then two of you could be brought as guests? Or... You like one of you gets in with a guest and the other three sneak in or just like you know hang out nearby. I don't know how you want to handle it, but those For the are record, the record. I'm okay being a guest. So those are the upcoming events. Um, Barrel racing was just yeah. one check though, right? That was just riding the horse fast. It was just or... it was just doing a lot of successful ride checks, like increasingly difficult ride checks. But if you have a mechanical horse, it can be crafty. Correct. Yep. All of the acrobatic and athletic um, events this mm -hmm. would be up for. Okay. So, steer, steer wrestling is where you basically ride over to a baby dinosaur. Um, you leap onto the baby dinosaur, and then you grapple it to the ground, and then you pin it to the ground... Uh, and then you have to hold the pin. Oh, sorry, that's the steer wrestling. Um, the baby dinosaur one is you ride over, you lasso them, uh, which is a ranged trip attack. Uh, and then you do thievery checks to tie them up with a rope. So that's, uh, that's the baby dinosaur one. So you need riding or crafting, followed by athletics, uh, followed by um, thievery checks. And then... You're also competing simultaneously against other people who are also trying to lasso baby dinosaurs. So you're like racing to see who lassos up their baby dinosaur first. Mm. I mean, that one sounds pretty fun. Okay, should I put you down for that one, uh, yeah. Stack? Okay. Yeah, Stack will do that one. All right, anyone else for this one before we move on to the next one? There's no uh, limit to how many longer. events you could sign up for. I don't want to embarrass myself. Lex, did you want to sign up for that one? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, Sack and Lex for baby dinosaurs. Okay. So what is Vidic? Is that would that be That is a that is a nature to command animal. Okay. Yeah. Probably gonna need non-lethal stuff today. All right, and then the next event is steer wrestling. This is a grown-up dinosaur, um, a Pachyosaurus, and this is also known as bulldogging. Um, this is where you're going to command an animal, uh, and then that's uh, you're going to get close enough to jump from the back of your mount onto the dinosaur, and then it's just a series of of athletics checks to grapple force them prone put them in a pin and then hold the pin so you have to get four athletics checks successful in a row these are all yeah, okay. these are all two uh pac-mans a piece because they're kind of like a skill challenge kind of like picking a lock sort of thing so you can start it and finish it in the second round with these um but that's that's the idea is you're trying to grab these guys and, and pin them down you want to do that one yeah. Okay. So wrestling be discretion. All right. Uh, what about you, Ketrin? You want to wrestle a dinosaur? Sure. Let's do it. All right. And Ketrin. Beautiful. All right. And then moving on, uh, you've got barrel racing, which is just increasingly harder crafting checks or nature checks to command an animal. Uh, Sign me up, coach. Oh, okay. All right, so barrel racing uh, with Bella, okay. And then we've got um, mounted marksman, which is a combination of either crafting and nature plus increasingly harder ranged attack rolls. Anyone want to try that one? Uh, I'll try that one. Okay. Sign me up. All right. I guess we might as well up our odds. I'll do that one too. All right, so stack. We but... need to actually win one of these, or like oh, three of them. <laughs> All right, and then the last one is Barrel Guard. Stop a Triceratops from destroying barrels. I think we have to do this because yeah. the others sound pretty risky. Yep, I agree. Okay, so your team's going to sign for Barrel Guard. What is the name of the team that is registering for Barrel Guard? Hmm. Yeah. Are we picking our party name right now? Well, I think we are. <laughs> Fuck. You're, well, I, you're picking the name of the of the people that yeah. are going to be uh, doing Barrel Guard. You'll also need a, a made-up name for them to announce when it's your turn to participate in one of the events. Well, these events are going to be taking place tomorrow right yep. so we're gonna have completely new disguises oh, you, are, yeah. you are gonna have completely new disguises tomorrow you'll build personas so I, don't, I have no idea what my name's gonna be because i could be a fucking child or i could be well it would have to be a name that doesn't bird. relate to how you look yeah yeah all right we will let which you is in... also gonna be confusing because then i'm gonna be the, the completely different person the next day Mm. <laughs> well, you guys are signing up. You're representing the group that's signing up. They haven't gotten to town. Yeah. They haven't gotten to town yet. You know what I'm saying? Like they're on their way. Yeah. yeah. There's some real rough and tough rodeo champs from the wastes. Yep. That's right. All right. Um, I just need a name for the team, and then you're free to go. No barrel was left behind. No yeah, barrel no left barrel. behind. <laughs> Okay. That's an interesting I'm not going to fight it. But... All right. No barrels left behind. Got it. Uh, the, the person signing you up uh, says the name to themselves, and they say, uh, Damn, is that like the whole focus of your rodeo team? It's just barrel guard? This is going to be incredible. That's We're really passionate about the barrel guard, but we specialize uh, in different things. Well, they're very lucky to have five team managers, or four in their child, so... Uh, can't wait to see meet them in person tomorrow. Uh, have them come by early so they have time to practice and get acquainted with the, the animals and whatnot. Uh, we're going to start at high noon. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, and then you guys head out, having registered no barrels left behind for tomorrow's rodeo events. 
So you said the goal is to head over to where now? We could assume the that it's still shop. pretty early in the day. You're going to head over to the alchemy shop? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me grab that map. Speaking of shops, I have a question. Sure. If I want to sell some of my equipment, how do I do that? You, and how much money does it give me? You get half of what's listed and you delete it off your character sheet. Okay. Because you're in a big city. And I, <laughs> I, I, would be, I would be a fool to try and tell you that it's impossible for you to sell stuff in, this, in the, one of the largest cities in the world. So, uh, yeah. You, plus, you have a fence working for your organization. Uh, Phoebe Dunsmith has a fence there. So you just give them the stuff, they'll give you the gold. You don't even have to go out and do it yourself. Perfect. The per government perks, you know what I'm saying? Government mm -hmm. perks. Wait till you get access to commissary shopping. I've heard it's pretty good. Uh, Tax-free and all that. All right. I will take you guys over to Rika's Reagents in the hoity-toity uh, Sky District near the Blythea College. Uh, let's see. What did I name this map? I certainly didn't name it what it's named in the book. That would be that would make too much sense. Uh, ah, Alchemist. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, put you guys down. Just kind of threw you guys everywhere. I'm gonna secure the map, and then we need the aforementioned. Let's see. Ah, perfect. There we go. All right. Now, before you get there, do you guys have any um, relationship with this building and or its proprietor before we head in there? I'm the alchemist store? The alchemist would have a yeah. relationship with the alchemist Yeah, I, so as established in a previous session, like, this is just a very popular store that mm -hmm. Bella would have frequented, uh, you know, whenever she needed stuff. But there's also a cafe across the street that she very much liked that had mm -hmm. the best dirty chai. Mm -hmm. Now it's gone. Fair enough. All right, I will move you guys over to this map then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Bella doesn't really go in for soda. She's very into coffee. Hmm. That's fair. There are studies that think sugar might be bad for your teeth. No one's confirmed it yet. Uh, could be a thing. Maybe. Maybe. Could just be people trying to sell you toothbrushes. They're not 100% yet. Nine out of ten doctors. So. <laughs> All right. So you guys make it over to Rika's Reagents in the hoity-toity uh, district near uh, Blythea College. Uh, there are all manner of beautiful people uh, going about their day, buying and selling magical trinkets, uh, taste-testing potions, and um, enjoying dirty chai at the Corner Cafe. All right. Uh, up ahead, you see the entrance uh, to... Rika's reagents. The building is uh, has a ve very strange curvature to the front, and that is because it is supposed to look like a potion bottle that has been turned on its side, and you're kind of entering through uh, the top of the bottle. Um, that was sort of the intent, I believe, of the uh, of the design. All right, you guys should be free to move about as needed. Uh, vibes. Yeah, stack this woman over here. She sees you and she knows she's she's got a customer and she says, uh, "Hey, we got magic lamps. These lamps are magic. One in every one hundred lamps has a genie inside. One in one hundred. That's right. We got keys that open things. Who knows what they open? Maps of the mana waste. All kinds of treasure out there in the mana waste. We got adventurers packs." And uh, we even have a license to sell bags of holding. Uh, and she waggles her one remaining eyeball as her um, prosthetic uh, clockwork eye kind of blinks rapidly. Uh, uh, me wait. Meanwhile, How much is that their bag of holding. Oh, it's um, it's the standard price for a lesser bag of holding. So. Yeah, I, 
I know all the prices off the top of my head. I'll go find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I don't know the prices. Either. That's fair. That's it's, fair. It's 75. 75 gold. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys see um, this statue. This statue is dedicated uh, to two cats who waited every day at the, uh, at the airship station for their master to come home from his expedition, uh, and he never did. Uh, and they died. It's very sad. Yep. Oh. Mm. But there was such an inspiration to the people that they built the statue. But uh, the statue actually got moved here from the, the airship depot when they had to do renovations on the airship depot. So They said the statue was too sad, so uh, so they moved it over to this far town. Now, yeah. Bella, anything could be in those magic lamps. How much are the magic lamps? Well, not, not... Uh, hold on, <laughs> I do not approve of the purchasing of genies. I think the trapping of them is a uh, crime against Oh them. no! Uh, buddy, hey listen. I think there's the... actually going to be genies in there. All of our genies come from free range elemental farms. They, uh, yeah. they live there willingly and they have a wonderful life before volunteering for our distribution program. Arrow's eyes. <laughs> All right, how, how, how much one of them lamps cost, man? Uh, Bella, you don't want to believe it, but against your passive perception, she has given you a very plausible story. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have uh, some insight on how genies feel about the captivity of lamps. Yeah, it could be. It could be a whole hotel. Anyways. There. These lamps are 100 gold. You give them a rub, something's bound to happen. You are not allowed to open it in a high magic area, so I recommend taking it, uh, oh, excuse me. I recommend taking it over to Smokeside during, uh, bronze time. Definitely not here in front of me. 100 gold. Hmm. You're not seriously considering this scam, are you? <laughs> I mean, it one on one, I mean... The the gambling part of Stack's brain. Let me tell you, these genies, I know some of them personally, and they are down for whatever. Some of them can grant wishes. Others will turn your enemies inside out. Some of them will share secrets of the elemental planes. And others might be romanceable NPCs. Who knows? That all checks out. Uh, these people say, uh... uh don't don't waste your time over there. Come over here and try some of our free potion samples. All right. A hundred percent alchemical, no magic involved. Today we have strawberry punch and lime kiwi. Uh, right, do, was do you was strawberry punch too? Uh, stra <laughs> stra <Lime. laughs> Strawberry Punch gives you a uh, plus one um, item bonus uh, to diplomacy checks. Hell yeah. Uh, Lime Kiwi gives you a plus one to your fortitude saves for the next hour. Oh, I guess I'll go with the strawberry. Okay. Um, scratch it. I just hand mm -hmm. used silver tongue mutagen. Oh. It was free. <laughs> This is also free for you. It tastes of strawberry. They then give you their, no, their it, business it card. A poo. They uh, they make custom potions. They are licensed to make magical potions. If you ever need magical potions, don't go anywhere else. We've got you covered. I'm gonna take them up on that. Kind. I'll take that card and I don't know those potions. To drag these over to your sheet now while I'm thinking about it. Alright, you now have a card for Puss Puss Potions. Hell Thank yeah. Alright. The iconic Puss Puss hands out the cards to you. Alright. Stack the deck. You know uh, Puss Puss over here. Um, oh. Yeah. They, uh, they dropped out of the college um, deciding that they could make more money as an entrepreneur and then they wouldn't be, quote-unquote, shackled by the government. Everybody that attends Blythe University ends up working for the government. Fair. Also yeah, not know. wrong. Also not wrong. <laughs> it's just a government training ground for stooges. Anyways, the actual entrance is over here for the, uh, 
uh, the alchemist, the, the real alchemist shop. The audacity of setting up on the street corner right outside and handing out free samples. Only in Alcastar, am I right? Hey. Alright, let me go. It's like, hey, I, I sold my... Oh, uh... as you head in, you see that there are some clockwork sentries. And they look like they're ready to fucking throw down. These dudes are much bigger than the clockwork sentries you faced at the bank. This is what money buys. It buys robot muscles. Uh, they say, welcome, enjoy yourselves, and where where does one go in the city of Alcastar to buy a robot like this? Oh, they're f for sale everywhere. They're just a little pricey. Okay. Yeah, they're a little pricey. Right. Like a robot like this it would probably set you back 1,500 gold. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you think we could have buy our own robot? I mean, uh, by the time you can buy a fifteen, spend fifteen hundred dollars on a, a level four robot, it's not going to be that good. But yeah, I mean, if you want to spend fourteen, fifteen hundred gold on a robot, I'll let you buy a robot. I see there is a goose person over here. Oh uh, yeah. No, it's uh, this is a this is a goose person. Um, we subscribe ah. to the Battle Zoo, um, you know, monthly monster uh, race plan here at. Uh, I didn't really back their Kickstarter, but anyways, yeah, it's a goose man. Uh, he looks over at you and, he's, and he said, he, he says, "Honk!" I'm glad they got the teeth right. Uh, but the most important person you see is Rika, the proprietor and owner of Rika's Reagents. Uh, she looks down at you and she says, uh, uh, "She looks down at you and says, oh, what a cute little girl! What are you doing in here?" I just came because I heard that there was trouble in the neighborhood. Something about a gang trying to blow this place up? Oh, yes, it was terrible. There was a, a gang of the Powder Puff Kids. Uh, they were setting off all sorts of bombs outside. Uh, it was terrible. I, They've been picking up deliveries here, and... Um, I, a customer is a customer, and I didn't want to be... Uh, she leans in conspiratorially and whispers down to you, a small child, racist. Uh, but it was a... It was a... It was a monkey goblin, and he had all manner of uh, colorful hair and tattoos, and it just didn't seem like the right sort of clientele for this, you know, fine of an establishment, if I do say so myself. And... Anyways, I didn't want to turn him away because business is business and everyone has an opportunity to uh, to learn and grow and so on and so forth. Gotta uh, make a living. But apparently, while he was in here picking up some of his reagents, his fellows were out there trying to set the adorable sad cat statues on fire. Well, hopefully statues wouldn't burn, but that does sound... Uh... Like, no good mischief? No, but the people nearby did. And when, then when they started flailing their arms and running around, they set a tent on fire, and it was just terrible. No, you don't want that. No. Oh, is this so your mother? Kind of... Your I daughter I, I is I so and... sweet. I reach up and I grab her Thank hand. you. She was asking me about the incident. She must think she's a little crime fighter. Like that, sl I'm gonna be like that slither game. scale. You get those notions out of your head right now. You don't want to be anything like that to the scale. But she's my hero! Uh, she's no good lizard. R Rika lets out a sigh. Like, ah, to have time for a family instead of just my incredible career. That That's the sigh so, that she gives. So what were you selling the monkey man? Oh, client confidentiality. I can't actually reveal that information. But, um... Please? We have all man... <laughs> When you say please, it triggers a skill challenge. Uh, you may attempt a... God, what do we call it in this one? Uh, request? You may attempt a request of her. Don't target her for the request because it's a set DC by the adventure. As I say this, can I drink a silver tongue mutagen? Oh, I mean, you need to tell me you were drinking it before you started These things only last for like a minute. I know, you gotta really time it. Alright, give me the... Uh... Okay. Um, one second. What, what's the uh, action for this? You it's a diplomacy. Diplomacy. Just. Yep. One second. Oh no! <laughs> I forgot. I can't put that window up because that window is the the stream. Wait, maybe I can. Oh yeah, I can put it up there. Nice. Uh, hold on. Is I'm this not. Private roll? 
Uh, no, I mean, you'd know. If you do badly, she will go from, uh, from being nice to you to being less nice to you. Oh my. Okay, <laughs> hold on a second. Big child eyes. I have to board game shit th this shit out. Let me see. Um, because why would a woman betray her professional interests to a child? But, you know, it's a board game. Let's see. Gotcha. Uh, very cute. <laughs> that's true. Your character is <laughs> very cute. And you're disguised as well. Uh, let's see. Rika's Regents. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Uh, she says, well, I mean, if you must know, they're picking things up for, uh, well... She, she whispers conspiratorially to uh, the cute girl and her mom, Explosives, I believe. Uh, she takes a book out from the counter. She spins it around. Uh, Bella, it is too high for you to see. Uh, so she, look up at mom. Do you give uppies? Yeah. Okay. All right. As you get uppies, you look, and right away you recognize many of the ingredients for making pyronite. Dun dun dun! Didn't see that shit come, did you? All right. I did not. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, uh, she says, "Yes, it's very strange, but they've been purchasing a lot, and they seem to have money. Their coin is good. So, who am I to judge?" But now, after that explosive incident, I won't be selling to them anymore. I would advise that... Never mind. I gotta take this into a child's <laughs> form. Um, I look back at discretion. Look at a child. Um, yeah, if anyone what? comes to buy these things, that you should probably not sell it to them. What's interesting to me is that they're purchasing the same things that uh, a very frequent customer of mine was also purchasing. Uh, his, na his name is Vashon Yadilby? No, Vashon. Oof, that cad. Uh, and uh, her beak blushes a little bit as she uh, as she, she turns oh, no. away. Uh, she says, I'm talking about Shoma Lysirius. Um, so... St Stack and Bellinora, you guys would know without a check who Shoma Lysirius is. He is uh, seven foot tall, uh, rail thin, um, green flame Ifriti. And he is uh, a bit eccentric. And he is... Um, he's that classmate in the anime that you, you're pretty sure like they, they have a villain arc coming up eventually. But you don't know when that villain arc is coming. Always hated that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he always blames everyone else for his failures, and he always tries to take the success of others and, and get credit for it himself. Um, you and he, Bella, were in the same um, cultural appreciation club for Ifriti uh, blooded people. Um, and he would never uh, chip in for snacks or anything, but he would always eat, like, the most. Like, you know how rail-thin people have that crazy yeah. metabolism? Oh, yeah. yeah, he would just eat all the fucking pizza, would never chip in, and he would just... He's, he always talks about himself, very narcissistic. Uh, not unusual for a Pathfinder alchemist, if we're being honest, but still more so than normal. He actually dropped out of school, though, um, because his grades were so bad... And he kept uh, making scenes whenever he would check his grades on the big embarrassing board, like in the Japanese schools where they put everybody's grades up for everyone to see. Uh, he would, like, flip out. He would shout and yell at people, make accusations. It, it wasn't a good fit. So um, so he left school. Yeah. Uh, it was a pain in my side. Yeah, you imagine that he would just become like a back alley, you know, explosives dealer, you know, probably making uh, making bombs for criminals, and it kind of sounds like that's what's happening. Well, um, I don't know how he would have caught a uh, whiff of this, but it was your notes. It's very possible. My lab was left uh, locked for a long period of time while I was I was in the hospital after an injury I received trying to develop pyronite. And uh, when I returned, my entire office had been ransacked. And I always assumed it was either Gattleby or uh, Mugland or just the school taking my things. But maybe it was him. Mm. All right. She uh, she says, well, 
uh, and kind of embarrassed, she like tucks the book away. She says, I've really said too much. I, I hope you don't mind me indulging your daughter's uh, playful fantasies, madam. Of course not. Mm. She's going to be an alchemist when she grows up. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Of yeah, she wants to go to school. Oh, man, when yeah. you walk up in your sexy dragon uh, disguise, Rika fans her uh, her wing hands, because, you know, they just have, you know, they don't have, like, angel wings. They're just, like, you know, like real bird furries. They just yeah, got yeah. bird arms, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, she, like, fans it across her face, like, uh, and kind of fans herself with her wings. And she says, uh, oh, um, who is this? Um, the name's, uh... Kyle. Kyle? <laughs> How exotic! Are you, yeah. um... Are you one of those, uh... Uh... Dragon-blooded, uh, lizard folk? He, like, looks over his scales a bit, and it's like, uh... It seems that way, madam. Is that, uh... Interest you? Oh, man. She, she uh... She takes a deep breath, uh... Her, her feathers ruffling, and she says... You have the same voice as a friend of mine. Uh, he's a catfolk named Stack the Deck. Oh. Uh, that, uh... Sorry, I don't know why that came to mind. You just remind me of him. Uh, uh, is there anything I could do for you? Any uh, thing you're interested in at all? Uh, yeah. Her assistant gives her a wry look like, oh, I see. And she goes to help other customers. Is there a, like, he motions back to Bella, is like, is there a, like, do you want to look, is there anything you want to buy, or, like, is there a, now tell the nice madam what you want. Do you have any uh, witchers of wife? Oh, of course we do, yes, of, um, plenty. Oh, are you, oh, she becomes, like, really flustered and embarrassed when she realizes that, uh, this sexy dragon man and this sexy, uh, Pr Prixen, um, or whatever the hell Magic Italy is, uh, Democrat, no, wait, uh, Representative, anyways, she's, she says, I, I didn't know you were all together, I I'm sorry, I'm not a homewrecker. Oh, it's very open. Oh, it's <laughs> Whoa! Okay, she turns her, she turns around and she just starts fanning herself and she says, keep it together, Rika, keep it together. Uh, yeah, you're very progressive. <laughs> Uh, this guy comes up and goes, Hark! Yeah, we got what you need! Hark! Hark! And he starts, uh, taking over for her so she can calm herself down back there. Uh, meanwhile, um, you hear the clopping of hooves and the, uh, jetting of steam outside, but, um, someone parks their horse out front. Uh, you hear the engine idling and then dying down. Uh, and then you see Shield Marshal Skedra walk in. Yeah, behind those Coke bottle glasses are the keenest fucking eyes on the Shield Marshal's payroll. She she walks in. She's got spurs on, but no boots. She looks around. She adjusts her hat, laden with bullets. And she uh, takes her cigarette, and she uh, very politely puts it out in a personal ashtray. Okay. Uh, she heads over to the counter. Oh, okay. As she starts heading towards the counter, it looks like, uh, Italian uh, diplomat. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, and she goes ahead to, uh, start making some, uh, some purchases. Yeah, right. I'll tell the lady behind the counter. I come from a very progressive capital of Cheliacs known as Egoria. Where we've learned to make room in our families for Espadeus, so, you know, making room for other people is nothing. Oh, wow. Uh, Rika says, oh, this is all so much. Um, uh, wow. Um, well, <clears throat> business, 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 business. Uh, yes, are you and your family new in the city? I would remember seeing such a lovely family, uh, before. And she mo she shoes uh, Go Goose Man away. Uh, we're we're fairly new. We don't usually come to this part of the town very often. 
Okay. okay. So you kind of engage in idle chatter with her, that yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, okay, and okay. then we get the elixirs of life, and then I want to right. eavesdrop on this go over here, though. Oh, on Skedra? All right, yeah, sure. Give me a uh, seek action. Oh, remember, if I don't prompt you for an explore action, but you want to have an explore action queued, um, you can either ask me to prompt you for one, or you can go to the party's character sheet, which is the little piece of paper next to the word the party at the top of the actor's tab. And there is a tab for exploration where you can assign yourselves a uh, like a default um, thing. Like, this is what I'm always doing. If Crash doesn't ask me what my explore action is, this is always what my explore action is. Uh, you guys can go ahead and set those as well. I always forget, because I'm new to this system, that you're always exploring when you're not in combat. Um, uh, yeah. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how much would it cost for me to buy, like, basically like one unit each of all the things that the Monkey Man was buying? Oh. So that I can continue my research. Okay. Um, if you were to purchase all the same things in the same quantities, uh, it would be 45 gold. Wait, to make, a, to make a bomb? Oh, Wait, dude, like there's a... bombs that are worth, like, 3,000 gold. One-time use oh. bombs worth 3,000 gold. Yeah, like... py Pyronite's, like, a level 11 item, too, so yeah. I'm not surprised. It's like, oh, Sag, don't cast magic. I'm going to make a 45 gold bomb. Hey, they have capitalism, okay? They don't need magic, all right? So, <clears throat> you don't know what happened in the Monday game with the Wild Surge. A lot of people died. It was really, it was terrible. Um, we're all, we're all still very traumatized by all what happened in that timeline. All right. So you, uh, you roll a, you, you can kind of hear, it just sounds like she's buying, you know, like reagents and bombs and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, elixirs of life, just your normal, I'm, I'm busy working adventurer slash police officer kind of thing. Doesn't sound like anything suspicious. Uh, okay. she does much to the cashier's, uh, sorrow pull out her wallet and then all of the uh fold up photos fly out and she starts talking about all of her children yeah <laughs> okay which are nu numerically named uh yes they're all numerically named yep all right um she however notices you noticing her and she says uh oh y you want to see too come on oh. over yeah uh, you look like a family man Oh uh, yes, I love. Is she she's a kobold. Oh uh, yeah, she's a kobold. Yeah, I uh, I see you kobolds have a very large family. It's very kind. Well, it's not uh, every kobold. I'm just a big fan of uh, breeding. Oh. I wish I had brothers and sisters. Do you? Well, I'm sure mommy and daddy could take care of that for you. Though, uh, she kind of yeah, looks from time. she looks from you. To this relatively human-looking uh, person, to this relatively human-looking person, and she shrugs and says, "I'm sure they'll figure it out." Yeah, he, uh, like, you know, does like a pat on the head and like, yeah, she just says things sometimes. Mm. Okay, she watches with great interest as you pat uh, Bellinora on the hand. Uh. <laughs> oh, God's sake! Yeah. And and she says, "That is very interesting." Well, I don't want to be a bother. I gotta get to work soon. I just uh, try and pick some stuff up on the way in. Be careful out there. There's a lot of crooks and criminals. Mm, no, I'm, I'm sure this is the nice part of town. Uh, well, even the nicest parts of town can become less nice with the wrong company. And she, uh, the camera like zooms in on her, uh, her Brock from Pokemon eyes as she scrutinizes you. Well, we got our... Did we get the elixirs of life? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, uh, she says, I, I gift wrapped them and, um, uh, I put a little something extra in there. Um, well, anyways, uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Any nods, Curly, and, yeah. Oh. Right in. Alright, uh... Say, uh... What was his shall be again. <laughs> okay. Well yeah. playing my Asmodeus. Uh, Shield Marshal Skedra never takes her eyes off of this beautiful uh, family as they awkwardly stumble towards the doors. I walk out holding Discretion's hand. Oh. 
Okay. <laughs> Just really trying to try to blow <laughs> this uh, illusion hat. Yeah. Man, what, bro. A hand holding is that really gonna blow it? There's, there's a, a, oh, you're a different size. It's a, I'm a the, halfling in there's a, body. I'm there's a holographic <laughs> overlay, remember? So any any like touching uh, of your body um, is a good chance of revealing the illusion. Oh, mm. so our hands just like weirdly fuse into. Well, it, 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 yeah, it would be like they just don't fit right do you know what i'm saying so like for somebody that wouldn't be paying attention it's just kind of like whatever like you know when ai makes a person with seven fingers but you're like look at those boobas um but <laughs> but like but if you're looking at something if you're looking at it you're like what the fuck like why did their hands mush together like that you know like that, that kind of thing yeah yeah um shield marshall schedule says uh go ahead and put it on my tab i need to get back to work and she adjusts her uh, her hat and you hear her uh, spurs clanking as she starts heading for the door right past you vulture now uh, about these uh magic lamps madam <laughs> as uh as you ask that uh shield marshal schedule exits the shop she looks over at you and says uh do you have a minute to answer some questions there Oh, uh... I'm currently I'm in involved in some investigations, and it occurs to me that you might be able to answer some questions. Maybe help me find some answers. Some answers about these, uh, magnificent lamps? Uh... Yeah, what are talking about? <laughs> yeah, you mean... Oh, I, like, oh okay, do okay, I have I gotcha. a lamp in my hand? Do I... <laughs> Oh, she does not let you touch the lips, uh, lest you, lest uh, you try to rub them. Lest you try to rub them. Yeah, can I? Like, right. as in if I was trying to rub them, I could have. Oh, it. you just want to reach out and start rubbing lamps? Is that what you're trying? To, uh, is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> I'm gonna say yeah, please, madam. Yeah, I didn't. Yes, e yes. Oh my God! All right, do you want to try to do it on the sly, or are you just gonna lunge? Yeah, can for I them? do like a thievery check to be like on the sly rub these lamps? Uh, yeah, I would say you could get a rub in, but you know, like I don't know if you'd be able to straight up steal one from her. Uh, no, no, not yeah, the, yeah. no, not to steal one. Just like, yeah. you know. So the, on the, the sly DC, the DC to rub it, it's gonna be much lower than the DC to try to steal it. Okay. Uh, all right, so give me a uh, a secret thievery. While this is happening, um, is anyone inside? Ketrin, um, are you up to anything, Vulture? <laughs> I'm, I'm just holding the wall up. Mm -mm. Okay, um, Zach, can you give me... Um, can you give me a D100? Okay, uh, let's see. So as you go ahead and rub rub this lamp illegally, um, you feel uh, something happen. Uh, the lamp uh, kind of tips left, tips right. Let me check the uh, calendar and the time of day because this is a magical effect. Uh, let's see. We are currently on the 9th, and it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. So let's see. On the 9th at 11 o'clock in the morning, it is surge time. So there's a 20% uh, increase of wild surges. And you are in Skyside, which has a base 5. So give me a D20 on a 9 or less, you cause a wild surge in addition to the unpredictable effect of this lamp. Okay, so you don't cause a wild surge. That's good. Um, you feel uh, your body um, being pulled away from you. Bella, you feel your body being pulled away from you. And Bella, you are now in Stack the Deck's body. And Stack the Deck, you are now in Bella Nora's body. All right. The Start feeling for... Jaunt, Jaunty is going to be like, uh, well, you want to buy one? Listen, buddy, you want to buy one or not? Like, what, what, what's going on here? 
Uh, meanwhile, over here, Shield Marshal Skedra is uh, saying, You seem like the matron of this family. Well, why don't you tell me? Uh -huh. What? Do you know any of these individuals? And she uh, pulls from her uh, a scroll case on her belt uh, a, a sheaf of wanted posters and starts showing you yourselves. These are very dangerous criminals. I wouldn't want them to do something to your daughter. I've seen these posters everywhere. Yes. You don't Dr. know. Dr. Sometimes, you feel like, <laughs> sometimes you feel like... Sometimes you feel like you've seen them, but then it's just like... Just like a phrase that you see them. Ah. Well, pay I'm close so attention to this one. Looking for something, and you see it everywhere. Mm. So I've been so worried about seeing them so close to my, my, my daughter. Uh -huh. Alright, so go ahead and give me uh, a yeah. deception. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This would be a secret deception, because you would not know if you if you got it or not. Mm -mm. She says, I, I understand, yeah. I understand. Well, I guess that's it for me. Thanks for answering like my questions today. I'd like to sense motive to know if she actually <laughs> bought that lie. Uh, yeah, like, so that would be... Uh, well, there is no sense motive, it's just perception. Perception for everything. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, it should say underneath perception. It should say like sense motive or conceal an object or whatever. Um, should be on there somewhere. Oh, I guess I would. No worries. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead and roll it secretly. Okay. Oh yeah, she fucking bought it hook, line, and sinker. Wow. Well, stay safe out there. Alright, um, Bellinora, nice you, you, you feel like, uh, you feel like, session. miraculously, she has been bamboozled. Of course, uh, Katrin used, uh, Irene, uh, discretion, used the silver tongue mutagen. Of course it was going to work. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, the, the lady looks over at one of her, uh, one of the lamps, the, the lamp that you, uh, that you rubbed. And she, uh, she squints her one good eye, and then the light uh, readout for her fake eye squints as well. And she says, uh, Hey, I, I told... Uh, buddy, I told you no touching. Did you touch one of these lamps? You could have blown us all sky high. You could have let, it, you could have let an ancient uh, uh, genie lord out of the lamp. It could have destroyed the whole city. I knew I should start putting these in a display case like the keys. Is, am uh, I still in Bellinor's body? Uh, yes. Uh, uh. Go buy the lamp. I don't know. No. Did I get hundreds? It's a war crime. How, how much? much? Really not a good how much? Mm -hmm. Where are the lamps? Are there a hundred gold? They are a hundred gold. Mm hmm. Um. So now that I'm in Stack's body, mm -hmm. like, well, how. Mechanically, how does this work? Am I, like,. If I were to have to do something, would I be using Sack the Dex yes. abilities? Yeah. Ah. To, to show how awkward it is, you would tell uh, Caden X what you want to do with his body, and then he would try to interpret that and then make the rules for you All with right. his sheet. Yeah. Buddy, buddy, the only way out is through. We need to rub the lamp again. Yeah, So, but we can't rub it again right in front of her. He's looking right at me. I will buy it. Listen, we, 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 you can do whatever you want. It's the, we just gonna deal with the consequences after. All right, madam, okay. you need to buy that lamp. Uh, uh, so uh, as as you are saying this, uh, you feel your body's switch back. Well, it seems okay. it only lasted a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> she says, "Uh, you want it or not?" No. Oh, uh, <laughs> do lamps work more than once? Nothing good comes from genie lamps. Uh, she says you can rub them once per day, and maybe one day, it'll be a lucky day. Yeah, I'll take one. Oh wow, okay. So you pay her a hundred gold for a lamp? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm broke now. All right. <laughs> I sold all my potions. Oh. Uh, Stack. 
What about Why? you doing that situation? We could have done so much with that money. <laughs> I thought you had a rat situation. A rat situation? Yeah, you... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> But a, but a lamp's a lamp. Anything could be in the lamp. Either. Okay. This thing All that right. you've purchased is an insult to my entire race. So she uh, she picks up the very problematic magical lamp, uh, and she uh, she hands it to you. And uh, yeah yeah that is uh, she well she doesn't hand it to you. she she wraps it up nicely and then hands it to you. Uh, she says all right. Now be careful where you uh you set this off. It could cause wild magic. Wow, you sure wild magic? Ooh, man, I never even uh. Wait, heard you haven't? You know what? You know how magic works in Alcazar, right? Yeah, I just I've never been exposed to wild magic before. I never like I usually try to be safe. Oh. Keep my nose to the ground. All right. Well, she she briefly she gives you a copy of today's paper with the the broadsheets on it, and then she gives you a full tutorial on the magic system in the campaign. Okay. Okay. All right. The rest of you, do you get up to anything while this is going on? Oh, just mm -hmm. waiting it out. Okay. I think we got everything we needed. And more. All right, Vulture, um, with your very decent, uh, very decent perception, um, you would kind of hear uh, around the corner here. There's a conversation happening. You recognize one of the voices as Schedules. I would just like to nonchalantly just walk by. Oh, okay, just walk by. All right, give me a seek action to see if you can hear the conversation. It looks like she is talking to two other shield marshals down the down the street a bit. Hmm. Okay. Um. What you catch from the conversation is uh, fan out. Uh, we'll grab them when they're not in such a crowded area. Turns out we were right, using illusions to hide themselves. Uh, you see her look back down the street, uh, toward, towards your general direction. Do you, as you keep walking, you kind of bump into this guy's mega raptor, and it makes a scree at you, uh, in outrage. And he says, uh, pa wow. pardon me, pardon me. She's a bit ornery this early in the day. Ma'am, might I say that is a beautiful hat. Uh, Vulture will just tip his hat to them and we'll just... Continue Where, where'd you pick that hat up, madam? Uh, I don't mean to be so forward, but uh, I'm thinking about getting my, uh, my lady love a hat like that. It looks fantastic. Uh... <laughs> I think a robot voice. <laughs> we'll right? Kind of just, like, look behind <laughs> the man, and we'll kind of just, like, point down the street. Oh, uh, he says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you don't... Oh, you can't speak. All right. Uh, I'm going to just make a check real quick. Okay. He does not know sign language, so he's going <laughs> to he's gonna head out. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Well, now I'm just gonna kind of follow back where he was going, okay. <laughs> and then go look for the other ones, and be like, "We have to go now." Okay. I wanted to get a coffee. No talking. We leave now. Shield marshals on the way. Oh boy. She looks longingly at the cafe that she used to like to go to, her old life. And keep the crowded areas. They're gonna try and nab us when we're if we're out by ourselves. Well, good looking out. Someone could, has to. I hate to say it, but we could probably dive into the sewers to get out of this part of town. We should probably check on how Tom Cardus is doing. Not Tom Card. Wait, John Gordon. <laughs> John Gordon. <laughs> Tom Cardus is doing good. He makes a lot of maps. Uh, he always helps us out with extra life every year. It's fantastic. All right. 
Uh, Maybe we would have gone one of his maps up there because they said they were setting maps. To oh, true, the true. Uh, the mana waste maps, yeah. You could always come back later on a less getting arrested day. Uh, <laughs> as you head over here, this guy says, uh, Hey, wait, I got bones and scrimshaw. I got all kinds of fossils. Uh, am you interested in any of this? They say at the uh, college they're developing the technique to bring ancient monsters back to life from their fossilized remains. It'd be pretty cool if that did really happen and you guys bought one of my fossils now and then you had a rare dinosaur later on in your lives, huh? That would be pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Tell more about your dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, These like dragons or something? Vulture. I guess I'm not dinosaurs in no, now. not you, now. You, you turn, you turn your, your hearing dial uh, up to 11, and you can hear uh, off of the distance, like, uh, guns being loaded, uh, clockwork horses get in position. Uh, the guy says, uh, Yeah, they call this one the Helix Fossil, because it's kind of shaped like a helix. I got I think this one's going to be pretty cool. Sounds like stuff's going down. I need to get my daughter. Vulture just leaves. Just leaves. <laughs> Well, you just remember my bone shop when you're thinking about bones. Oh, come on, human child. Better than that for safety. All right, fair enough. So, as you guys head out, I have to figure out why I have gentle uh, lo-fi music playing in the background. Uh, I have so many windows open today with the extra streaming. It's it's very exciting. Have we entered the chase music uh, portion of the adventure? <laughs> uh, yeah, this would probably be a chase scene at this point. You, you guys did blow your cover, so um, let, me, let me grab some chase music for you real quick. We need to, mm. like, establish safety circles when we're around uh, villains. Like, we can't touch each other. It's a learning process, you know? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a... it's like All when right. you're holding a knife. You walk around, you hold, you know. <laughs> All right, so... Hmm. So many windows. I don't know why it's besting me so hard. Uh, let's see. Bonify. Run from guards. The soundtrack. Alright. These guys, they know what happens in D&D. They made a song called Run from the Guards. So. Alright. First we gotta figure out, where are you going? The rodeo's not till tomorrow? Uh, correct. So you guys are currently over by the college. Where are you trying to go next? The, there is, uh, the... There's gates that lead out into the mana waste, uh, pretty, pretty close. You could try to lose them there, like, like, just leaving town. You could try lose them down by the river. Try dipping down into the sewers. You know that the it's going to be easier to lose them in Smokeside, but currently you would have to cross one of these bridges, um, which could end up being a, a you know a choke point or a, you know a real bad decision if if they catch you on the bridge. Alter's heading north. Heading north. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go steal a skyship. So you're going to try to lose them in the fancy rich person neighborhood where you guys may or may not have broken into someone's home and murdered them, like up in that area? So, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. but those other people who did Oh, that. right, right, right. Okay. Well, I have my chase deck right here. Okay. Uh, so when you critically success, you get two chase points. When you succeed, you get one. And when you fail, you lose a chase point. <clears throat> um... The goal is to hit the uh, correct amount of chase points before um, a certain number of rounds have passed. Um, okay, once you accumulate enough chase points to overcome the obstacle, uh, you move on to the next obstacle. Flip the next card over so it's visible. Extra chase points don't carry over. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right. Each requires its own number of chase points to overcome. However, anyone who hasn't taken their turn. Okay. Um, great. All right, I'll put everybody into initiative. <clears throat> All right. We'll just do a random initiative. <coughs> I guess initiative's always random, but, you know. Uh, okay. Let's see what the cards have in store for you. Okay. 
so, um, as you guys, <coughs> excuse me, as you guys begin heading to the north, uh, you realize that the road that, um, Vulture has chosen to, uh, to lead you guys down is under construction, uh, because it, uh, there was a cave-in and it fell down into the sewers. Uh, as such, the ground is unstable and there's a lot of things to, uh, trip and fall in, um, so, you will need three chase points to get past this obstacle. Um, if by the end of this round, you don't have three chase points, uh, you would either uh, be caught by your pursuers, or um, you might even fall into the sewers. So, uh, Vulture, how do you want to uh, get past or lead your allies past the shaky ground here? Examples that they give are acrobatics to have your balance or perception to find a stable path. Is there diminishing returns? Um, no, the not the way this, this chase scene works because um, you've only got like, you deal with each encounter separately. And so you have to get three by the end of the round here, which isn't really that bad because you got five people, so... Yep. Um, man, my boundary just decided to crash. You, you want me to just roll you a perception check? Uh, I'm back in, I think. Okay. Back in. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll roll perception. Okay. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, 15 does not hit... Uh, the DC for the for finding a safe path through. Oh, we roll out with a good point. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, seventeen is just enough. Uh, so that's one success. All right, Ketrin, to you. Um, I. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um. I am going to use athletics to uh, knock over a board that I can walk on to cover the things. Okay, the, the that sounds pretty terrain. cool. All right, um, go ahead and give me an acro, or sorry, an athletics check. I will point out that you can spend your action um, doing aid another if you feel like I can't do mm. any of the stuff good in this challenge, or the DCs are too high in this challenge. And then that would give someone else a chance to have a better roll, uh, essentially. Uh, but a 30 is a critical success. So that is two successes. You guys make it past the shaky ground of this uh, construction area, no problem. All right. Let me reset the initiative. Uh, here we go. All right, so going into the next round, uh, Katrin, um, speaking of precarious, uh, precarious beam, uh, you see the full, uh, scope of the sinkhole up ahead, and someone else had a similar idea. There is a very rickety work bridge that runs across this caved-in section of street. Uh, it is roped off, uh, so that the general public doesn't use it, but uh, it might be your only way through. The recommended stuff here is uh, acrobatics for balance or uh, crafting or survival to stabilize the bridge. Those are the recommended. Uh, yeah. So what do you got? This will require um, this will require five successes uh, to to get across successfully. So each of you would either need to succeed. Uh, or you would need to, um, some of you would need to critically succeed. I will do a crafting. Okay. All right. Give me a crafting check. It's a DC 17. Holy shit. All right. That's two successes. Only three more required. Uh, Ketrin grabs, uh, both sides of the rickety kind of, uh, rope bridge and just, uh, like anchors them down for the rest of you. All right. Stack. What do you do? All right. To be crafting and or survival, survival. Yep, crafting, survival, or acrobatics. I like to do acrobatics to okay. try and uh, I guess get the ropes in like a good orientation. Right. 
Oh yeah, 24 is going to succeed, though not critically. Uh, so there's still uh, two more successes needed by the end of the round. Uh, Bellinor, to you. I'd like to uh, further build on what Ketrin is doing and do crafting. Okay. Is this public roll? Uh, yes. Yeah, you would know if you succeed or not. Okay. Um, 18 is enough for the crafting. It was 17. So that is a fourth success. We need one more for the end of the round. Discretion. Well, I will try to slither my way past the balance. All right, let's see the acrobatics. Holy shit, man. All right, yeah, you guys get past that, no problem. Uh, looking back, you see that the horseback riding um, shield marshals who are pursuing you, they look at the caved-in street and the... Uh, it's impossible to get the horses across. Uh, cursing! Uh, they wheel their horses and uh, mega raptors around and they fan out uh, trying to catch up with you guys. You get the feeling that you will need to keep moving, but you will have a significant uh, lead on them. So at this point, a failure might not result in immediate combats because you guys are so far ahead. Um, as you continue looking for a place to duck in and, you know, hide, have your police stars start flickering and disappear, that sort of thing, um, somebody uh, ahead shouts, It's coming down! Uh, and you see that a barrel that was being uh, hoisted up with a crane has uh, snapped free of the rope and it has smashed into the ground, sending... Uh, smoke uh and chemical gas all around the street um this smoke cloud is relatively easy to to deal with but you will require five successes uh to get past it the recommended things are fortitude to endure the coughing fit or survival to disperse the smoke uh of course other creative solutions are encouraged uh so we'll do a fresh initiative for this one Oh man, Ketchum, you're just crushing initiative today. <laughs> it's unusual. All right, um, <laughs> Ketchum, you are uh, you're up first again. Uh, how do you want to deal with this? Fortitude, survival, or some other thing? I I will do fortitude and okay. uh, gesture the other guide the others through. Okay, beautiful. Give me a fortitude save. Oh, 15 is just enough. It is a DC okay. 15 fortitude save. So it's one out of five success. Bellinora, to you. May I use my alchemical um, alchemy lore? Yes. As oh. a. Uh, All right, great. Uh, one second. I know this. This is an alchemical effect. I would say this is a DC 15 for your alchemy lore. Okay, I'm just trying to find my. Tr there it is. Mm, 18. All right, that is a success. Uh, so you, uh, with your knowledge, you realize that this isn't in any way deadly. It's just going to be itchy and uncomfortable if you uh, linger in it too long. All right, uh, Vulture, to you. Three more successes are needed. I'm going to attempt a survival. Okay, survival. Ooh, a 14 is enough, because survival is actually the lowest uh, DC on of the two. Um, you have four out of five successes uh, heading into uh, Discretion's turn. Wait, you don't have four, right? You have th that would be three, so one, two, three. Okay, because um, there wasn't a critical this round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Discretion, to you. So I got these very big wings. Can I use athletics to dispass it? Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Um, are you in your dragon form right now and just hidden by the Zimby. illusion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. That's fine. Uh, we will set that at a DC 15. Okay. Well, oh, no. let's just do a, a quick little... Oh, uh... uh, okay. Ah, okay. That is a success. Nice. Hey. All right, stack. It's 
all or nothing. Right. <sighs> Don't want to get slowed down by the smoke cloud. It's going to give your pursuers a chance to start catching up. That'll make the final card that's coming up uh, even more deadly. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I have anything. Because uh, my fortitude isn't great. Uh, it's a DC 15 for the fortitude, DC 13 the, for the survival. And then, um, so far, anything that was a good suggestion has been set at DC 15. All right. I think I'll just do fortitude in the next oh, reason. All right. There you go. No problem. All right. You guys make it through the smoke. Um, you could hear the galloping of hooves and the click clack of raptor talons on stones. Uh, and then you hear a lot of coughing and wheezing as they also are dealing with the fallout of the smoke. However, as you think that you have reached freedom and you turn the corner, you see that there is a corrupt patrol. This is the name of this one. So you just see that there are a bunch of unmounted um, guardsmen. And uh, they see that you're running from something. And they are either going to uh, figure that out and uh, start an encounter, which may slow you down long enough for your pursuers to reach, or they're going to um, buy whatever you're, you're selling them, essentially. So, <clears throat> the suggested actions are a DC-18 society to bribe them, or a DC-20 stealth to lose them, and then whatever other ways you can think of of dealing with corrupt uh, patrolmen. Uh, so... Um, yeah, let's start uh, the initiative up here. And... All right, Stack, you're up first. How do you deal Sorry. with these unscrupulous uh, lawmen that don't for sure know why you're running, but they figure it's for a good reason? Can I like do like a quick like acrobatic hop? Oh, I did acrobatics already, so I can't. Well, no, e each of these obstacles is considered a fresh thing. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So the two recommended are society to bribe or stealth to to lose them. But this is a oh, we can do a, stealth. A, oh, stealth. Yeah, the stealth to hide in okay. like another alleyway. All right. Like so the, the you'll need five successes to get past this encounter. So uh, let's see that first roll for stealth. Uh, twenty is enough. That was the DC for stealth was twenty. So one success. Play passes to Ketrin. How are you going to deal with these unscrupulous lawmen? Um, I am going to put the fear of God in them. Oh, it's shit. Religion check. Okay, okay. Um, I am going to set the DC for that to be 20. Uh, but, yeah. Uh. Oh, oh 15 oh. not enough. Not enough. I'll re-roll it. Okay. It's worse. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, so as you start to yell at them about, uh, religion and stuff like that, and, and they need to, like, watch, watch their step and uh, all, all that, um, they, uh, they say, uh, yeah, now, now, uh, what, what exactly you, uh, you running from here? Uh, Vulture, to you. Alright, Vulture busting out of stealth, that is gonna be a success. Alright. Bellinora, you're I'd up. I'd like to put the fear of bureaucracy in them and okay. call an Alkenstar lore to know their name and badge number, and I will have words with your superior. Mm -hmm. Um, I will set that at a DC 20, but you can attempt to use Alkenstar lore to get a sense of what would make a uh, corrupt uh, officer patrol back down. Can I, can I house an intellect uh, mutagen to get a plus two to this roll? If you're willing to burn your resources for this, I love it. Go for it. Okay. Um, this is a fan of plus two. I, huh? I can never figure out how to add these things. Ooh, 27 is... 29. A 29? That's pretty close to a critical success that would give can you that, a chance of actually passing is, this encounter. Is there anything I can do to do that? Uh, like, just <laughs> succeed at a cost? Yes. Let's see what happens. Card number four. Wait, what? You are confused. Uh, don't hit me. Pinch to nerve mental slip hmm it just says confused it doesn't say when it when it ends um all right so you will start the next encounter um confused 
Okay. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that's probably pretty bad, but okay. Yeah. All right. Uh. Just, but that's a, uh, two successes. So discretion. You just gotta make a success here. All right. I'll just sneak. Okay. You're gonna do a stealth. While they're distracted by religious lady, and uh, small childlike Karen. Beautiful. Uh, Easily done. All right. Realizing that they don't want anything of what these people have, the guards say, "Just get out of here." Uh, and they start heading in the direction you came from, which will likely mean that they run into your pursuers, which might buy you enough time to finally lay low. So we will assume that somewhere, uh, somewhere in Auburn Hill, you guys found like an abandoned garage or, you know, some, uh, some alleyway that's, like, real, like, dark and shadowy, and you're just kind of holding up there waiting for the chase to end. Is it you're supposed to use cantrips or, um, weapons, of okay. which you don't really have good at any of those. So, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would I have, like, the wherewithal to not throw my very limited potions? I mean, hopefully. Like I, I mean, you're, you're pretty I confused. I have a gun. It's a potion of weapon. You have a gun. All right, yeah. So one action, you'd pull out your gun. Second action, you would fire at someone. Uh, we'll roll a d4 to see who it is. Go ahead and give me an attack roll with the gun. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Now, obviously, you didn't actually get confused to start doing this. We're going to say that this is just, with all the shuffling around, you dropped your gun and it went off. Uh, Alright, a 20 against number 2, which is discretion. Discretion, would that errant bullet have shot you? With a 20? Yeah. Alright, uh, roll the damage, Belenora. Okay, so discretion. You take 3 points of damage as in the hustle and bustle of escaping from the police officers, Belenora, flustered, drops her gun, it discharges, the bullet uh, glances you, for three points of damage, breaks a window, and uh, you guys continue to run away. Bella, at that point, you would kind of get your senses back about you, and now you wait for everything to die down. Uh, stop dropping these. Yeah. Shouldn't you guys should have been at full health, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not at all. Yeah. Good, good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, you guys have escaped from the, uh, the police. I'm going to say at this point, uh, about an hour has gone by. Uh, what would you like to do now? Now, they will be on the lookout for people matching these descriptions. So, the rest of your day is going to be a lot more difficult. We kind of did everything we need to do today. Okay. We signed up for the rodeo, we went to the alchemy shop, and now we just have the rodeo. I want to go to the, you know, the bar. Yeah, but we have to, like, win the rodeo to do that. Or do you mean uh, the powder, the powder horn? Uh, yeah, the powder horn. That would probably be unadvisable given our current notoriety, but I'm mm -hmm. down if you are. Uh, I mean, if anyone else doesn't want to go, then I'm, that's fine. I just uh, was putting it out there. I think that's the next thing that we do, but we might want to save it for tomorrow with new disguises. Uh, fair. Anyone else have ideas? I think we also just try to get the lounge, but I think that's oh. shot. Oh, the lounge, yeah, the lounge is one. That's what I meant. Mm. Well, some of you, I think, were hoping to go to the lounge as uh, VIP members with, um, you know, members only chits that you got from rodeo stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you, once we go to, the, once we do rodeo, then we could go to the lounge and mm -hmm. then. But we, we have the, the powder horn saloon. Right. Okay. Well, I guess the question uh, I have then is, with your uh, with your faces and identities known, do you still want to try to traverse? I would, at this point, then have to actually roll four random encounters as you explore the city in case you pull a patrol that knows to look for you. Uh, it's not a huge chance, but it is an added danger. Like, you could continue living your lives and doing your stuff, but, um... Question. Are we hmm? still in surge time? Uh, at noon, surge time would have just ended. Well, at least it's not super dangerous. Is 
So, Anyone? I guess the I, question... My votes, we call it a day. Anyone uh, else? All right. We call it a day. All yes. right. Um, so I would assume if you're willing to then spend the rest of the day safely kind of traversing your way back to the Barrel and Bullet Saloon, because you certainly wouldn't want to get followed, uh, you spend several hours uh, kind of circuitously uh, choosing a different route home than you took to get there. Maybe you even ride uh, ride the screw elevator just to kind of like really kind of throw them for a loop um, and then come down from the north. Either way, you eventually return to the Barrel and Bullet Saloon um and call it a day as part of that winding path could we go by the east of all breweries and see if our horse is still there uh yeah you certainly can um on your way back as you swing by the east of all brewery the horse is no longer there okay yeah that was a check i rolled many many sessions ago that uh has finally been resolved so all right so as you guys make it back to the barrel and bullet saloon you call it a day you rest, and you get ready for tomorrow's rodeo. I will go ahead and get you new disguises for tomorrow. Um, while I'm doing that, you guys could uh, discuss among yourselves what you've learned today and what you're hoping to learn tomorrow uh, sort of deal. So the big thing that stands out to me is how is this gang of back alley bombers putting together the ingredients for Pyronite? How would they know about that if they didn't get a hold of Gattleby's formula? That is a good question. That is a good yeah, question. Yeah, a good question, Party Alchemist. <laughs> I got a hold of someone's notes. Yeah, they're saying the magic cast is always causing trouble, not the alchemist bomb makers. It's always Pyronite this, Pyronite that. <laughs> Pyronite has still done a fraction of the damage that uh, wild magic has caused over the centuries. Um, and it's uh, bombs are a known quantity. You know what you get when you blow up a bomb. Anyways. We'll have really? to Wasn't that whole demonstration unplanned and almost blew up a whole fucking academy? Listen, if I had done the demonstration, it would have gone fine. Mm. Oh. But it still says that Power Knight isn't exactly and you can make Pyronet for 75 gold? How much can you make? Like, how much could Gattleby even make if he, like, he can make it as a lot? Well, the question was, what did they purchase in their last purchase? Right. So that that's didn't right. necessarily yeah. mean it was everything. Like, it was some of the ingredients for Pyronite. Oh, okay. They meant that, like, you recognize the formula for Pyronite is those 75 gold worth of items. Okay. I assume that wasn't the case. I, I, I'm assuming I can't actually know what would quantify making this level 11 item at, at where we are in the game. Correct, correct. Um, essentially what happened is you and Gattleby discovered it via the magic of plot. Yep. Um, Gattleby, his NPC ability is eidetic memory, so he has the formula memorized. It was so complicated and so accidental that you do not have it memorized. Uh, right. Right. Um, so that's that's why he was sought sought out to um, kind of get him off the table, but now they're concerned that you know there could still be you know piss in the pool essentially. That man lied to me, and there is still a written copy of the, my notes. I'd be so mad at him. I'd be so mad at him. All right. So, on the next day, Vulture, uh, you wake up and you are a really handsome man when you put your hat on. Oh my. Yeah. I'm assuming, again, you guys set, like, an alarm to make sure you wake up at a, a time that would be appropriate to use this ma magical item and yeah. not, yeah. I, th I think after the first time, we've learned. Uh, fa fair enough, fair enough. That's what I, yeah, that's the assumption <laughs> I've been going on. Uh, Bell and Nora, you are a very handsome goblin. All okay. right. Okay. Uh, Prosthetic ear. Discretion, you're a very handsome businesswoman. All right, let's see... Katrin, you are got, like oh pity and eyes. Uh, you are some kind of Sasquatch-looking dude. If I didn't know you better, I would say that's like a, a bugbear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me check something real quick. I think that might actually be one of the story NPCs. Um. Oh yeah, I forget that we sometimes are people in the city. Yeah. 
I was gonna say my previous disguise, that lady, I think she was a shield marshal by the car. So I was very concerned when uh Skeeja was there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hey, day of the rodeo, I gotta make alchemical supplies. All I'm right. thinking goo grenades will be good for the triceratopses. Katrin, you know that there is a bugbear that looks a lot like this, who works for the Temple of Bry. Is it something that we could do, like, could I roll Alkenstar Lord to see if I recognize any of our uh, disguises from the start Ooh, of the day? That's a, really, that's a really good idea. Yeah, why don't you just give me a recall knowledge and I'll see if you recognize anybody. Okay. And then stack the deck. Uh, you are, oh, a very dapper shooty. Hey! Very nice. I love that. A very big shooty. Uh, let's see. Alright, so Vulture and Bellinora, you roll some checks. Uh, yes, yes. You recognize this guy. Um, he definitely works uh, for the Temple of Bry, and he's relatively high ranking within the Temple of Bry. Um, it's noteworthy because he is a bugbear, and not a lot of bugbears, um, even in this, I don't know, second age of Pathfinder magic, um, g go in for, uh, that sort of, sort of thing. Um, let's see, shit, do they even have bugbears in this fucking system? I'm gonna say. Yeah, they got bugbears. Okay. I don't think they're as cute as they, Oh, they look like kitties! Look at them! <laughs> they're so cute <laughs> oh my god anyways um yes so anyways bugbears are not uh known for like ah, yeah i'm gonna worship bry in the middle of the steampunk town so he definitely is pretty pretty well known in that circle so people might be surprised uh if there's an overlap of i'm interested in in the teachings of bry and also the rodeo <laughs> so that could be interesting um the rest of these people, none of them um, ping as being uh, exceptionally uh, noteworthy. Really yeah, yeah. Exceptional hat. That's true. That's true. And I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to just say that all Shunis look alike, uh, but they do look very similar to each other. So uh, that one Shuni in a tie and a top hat, I mean, might, might be the same as many other Shunis in a tie and a top hat. There are subtle diff subtleties that it's very hard to know unless you spend a lot of time around Shunis. All right. Um, with all that sorted, um, I guess I'll take you over to the rodeo. And you guys should have your rodeo names ready. Uh. <laughs> the Ridgeback Rodeo Arena. All right. Let me do a quick check of this map. Looks like it's good. Go. Put you guys down. I'll just have you guys off to the side here. Alright. We're going to need some opponents for you guys in some of the events. So I'll go ahead and grab those real quick. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay, so we'll throw this out. And this one. And mm. Okay, I'll bring you over to the map. Alright, let me see what we got here. Who wants to roll the... Who wants to rub the... <laughs> the, the lamp. Rub the lamp today. Uh, let's see. Chum, chum. Every time you bring that thing out, Bella looks at you reproachfully. 
Okay, well, oh, yeah, you're not gonna release them if you don't if you don't rub the lamp. I, I'm gonna just wait for when we find like someone that sells like skins, dragon parts, or something. He spends all his money on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys uh, should be in here and good to go. All right, uh, looking around. Bella, you recognize one of the amateur entrants as Jeremy. Jeremy, what are yep. you doing here? Do you go up and say that to him? No. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. You can't blow my cover. All right. You see a very, a very polite dwarf. dwarf. Uh, they're ready to kick some ass. Uh, spectacular beard work going on there. Uh, and you see an off-duty uh, police officer who apparently has not had to deal with heat metal before. Uh, and so, yeah. Okay. Bone jewelry, people. Bone jewelry. Don't, don't ever have metal jewelry. That's a terrible idea. Okay. So, as you guys assemble, the, uh, the crowd seems excited. And, uh, let's see. Rodeo rules. There we go. All right. <clears throat> The announcer says, uh, welcome, welcome all. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I actually have to get you guys situated first. So when you guys show up early for the event, it's not going to start until noon. Uh, but they want to know if you brought your own mount. Shit. <laughs> I was really counting on the mechanical horse. I well, they, they understand that. that amateurs, uh, are generally pretty, you know, down bad. So they probably yeah. don't even have their own. So they do have ones that you can use. Okay. So, they assume that none of you have it. Alright, then, uh, I guess I'll go from right to left. Stack, do you want a clockwork horse or a raptor? A uh, raptor. Okay. Alright, and uh, let's see. Alright, they bring you out a mega raptor. It seems, okay. it seems, yeah, it seems very ornery. Very ready for, for ass kicking. Ketrin, do you want to, do you, are you pursuing... Are you in a one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a mount. Do you want a uh, raptor or a clockwork horse? Clockwork. All right, clockwork. Alrighty. Uh, discretion. Raptor or horse? Yeah, like I'm gonna be terrible with either. I'll go with the clockwork. All right, clockwork horse. All right. Uh, Bella. Clockwork horse, please. Okay. And vulture. Work. Clockwork horse? Okay. Oh, All right. I think the raptor was just fine. You could have brought our Pachyosaur, maybe. Ooh, that's true. You could have brought your Pachyosaur. Oh, it would have been a lot easier. All right. And then Jeremy will ride a raptor. What could possibly go wrong? That's, yeah, he's probably doing this for drug money. All righty. So, um, here you are, down in the world. Um, they walk you through um, the many mini games that you will be participating in to try and make this happen. They explain that due to the mini game nature of this, not all of this adheres to the Pathfinder uh, core rules, um, but uses the mechanics of Pathfinder to create a completely unique and wholesome experience, etc., etc. They also have you guys sign uh, a waiver that you understand that you may die today. And that the the road the Ridgeback Rodeo Arena is not responsible for your burial fees, your medical fi uh, bills, or taking care of your family when you're gone. Uh, also, that you understand that if you have the audacity to try and activate magic during this event, uh, you will be held legally responsible for anything and everything that happens during that time. So, does anybody, upon seeing this, these legal documents they have to sign, want to back out? You're also signing under a fake name. This is a lot of crimes happening right now. A little, little cope. Okay. Um, currently, this is um, you are in Skyside uh, for this, and it is um, neither Bronze Time nor Surge Time, so it's a 25% chance of there being a wild surge if you try to use magic. All right. With all that settled, uh, they will say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a fine Wednesday afternoon. 
We're going to go ahead and have Amateur Afternoon. Uh, there's just a huge applause. Amateur Afternoon is apparently a really popular uh, thing that they do here. Probably because amateurs don't really know what they're doing, so they get hurt a lot. People like seeing that. That's very exciting. Uh, so they say, uh, first up is going to be some tie-down roping. Uh, anyone that signed up for tie-down rope and go ahead and get on out here. Uh, and so, like, the gates would open. You guys would kind of ride out. Uh, so I believe tie-down is Stack and Lex. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm just going to make your mount follow you. There we go. Where do I sign up to get tied down? Oof. You got to have a little dinosaur costume. Mm. All right. Let me go get the Pachyosaurus babies. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Pachyosaurus babies. Here they are. Okay. Uh, the babies are medium size uh, and weaker than their their parents, but they still uh, pack a punch. They still pack a punch. All right. Uh, let's see. Jeremy is uh, involved in this event. Um, as is this mysterious, uh, no, 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 the shield marshal for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, they bring out the babies. The babies look scared and confused. What's happening? Where's mama? Uh, so there are four and they will have their own initiatives and they will try and, you know, run away from you guys, essentially. Um, once another person is trying to deal with a, uh, a baby dinosaur, it is considered, it's not against the rules, but it's considered foul play to interfere with somebody else's, uh, dinosaur once they have started the, the process. Alright, so what's gonna happen here is you're either going to use nature to command your animal or use crafting to move your horse. Um, every time you want to take a stride action on your horse, you will have to make a new check, uh, to, to move your mount. Um, when you get within, uh, 30 feet, you are going to attempt a ranged trip attack. Um, we're basically just going to use athletics for this. And then that will signify that you have lassoed the creature successfully. Once you have lassoed, you can dismount. And then you have to move adjacent to the creature, and then you need three successes that are two actions each to tie up the hind legs, the fore legs, and the hog tie. So there are penalties for critically failing any of these attempts that will set you guys back. You are racing against the clock in so much as there are other people here that want to win as well. Uh, first prize in this competition uh, is going to receive 10 gold uh, and a blue bottle cap. The, the blue bottle cap is what you show to get into the Longhorn Lounge. All right. So, um, with all that settled, your mounts will not have their own initiative uh, because that feels like a pain in the ass. Um, but essentially, if we wanted to learn the rules uh, properly, I guess they would have it because then you have to command the mount and then the mount, like goes on its turn so you basically queue up uh actions for your mount to do and then when the mount's turn comes up it does the things so sure we'll give it a shot uh here are the baby dinosaurs and let's roll some initiative i'll also clear the initiative uh sorry the the chat there we go and we'll go ahead and roll everybody in all right, those of you spectating from the side, um, you could, of course, uh, try to do some sneaky stuff, uh, we'll say in between rounds, or just generally cheer and, and that kind of thing. Um, keep in mind, though, this is a crowded event, 25% chance of a magical effect. You know, just, just remember all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, initiative begins with Thin Clockwork Horse. Uh, it is just going to idle. Uh, waiting for commands, so it is going to delay its initiative until it goes after its rider. So it'll delay itself until after Jeremy. Wonderful. Uh, so then that brings us to Decisive Horse, which will delay their action to go after Spunky Shield Marshal. And then 
Uh, Spunky Shield Marshal will act. All right. Um, these horses ain't particularly fast. Uh, I mean, 40, I guess, is pretty fast. Just not D&D &D fast. Um, she's going to measure the distance. 40 would get her right up on some dinosaurs. So she's just going to do a crafting check to queue up one stride on the horse. So, here we go. Um, crafting check. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, she's going to roll with a plus five. Uh, oh, wait. No, sorry. Plus nine. I'm looking at the wrong sheet. I'm looking at the horse's sheet. Oh, my God. Never mind. She's going to roll. Uh, here we go. She'll roll her crafting check. Uh, it's a... F yeah. They're just trying to get the horse to start up and get moving. So, yeah. 17 is more than enough. Then they are going to... Um, ready in action to use the lasso when they get close to make the uh, the range trip attack. All right, play would pass to the animal. The animal will move forward. If I'm doing riding wrong, I'm sure I will hear about it in the comments. Uh, but she's going to ride right up in here. There is no penalty for being in melee when you use range attack. She'll go ahead and try to do an athletics check. Of which she does not have proficiency. Oh no. Um, so this would be at a plus 10. Oh wait, no proficiency. This would be at a plus 6. Here we go. Alright, she is going against the creature's passive fortitude. Uh, or sorry, reflex, I believe. To trip it? Tripping is 4. Yeah. Uh, either way, reflex. it's reflex. Okay, then that does not hit. Um, and that would be their turn. Uh, Vulture, to you. Yeah, if you want to trip, you can also just use the basic action methods. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to the same thing that she did. Okay. So, first, it's going to be crafting. If I get this first move. All right, a uh, 10 is not enough to get this thing uh, going. You need a 15 to, to get it going, but you can just try it again. Uh, all right, try again. I need 12 my plus zero. Mm. Okay, you have a third action. Okay, on its turn, it is going to take a stride action. All right, and that would be your, that'd be your oh. turn. All right, uh, let's see. Calm Pachyosaur uh, Baby is just going to look around and just vibe. It doesn't 100% know what's going on. Seems like it should be fine. Uh, Ditsy is going to just wander over here. It's going to take a stride action, and it's going to stride over here. All right, it'll take another stride action to go over here. All right, uh, this one uh, does not want to get roped, uh, so it is going to run uh, away. So it's going to go this way, try to hide in the corner. Um, as they move away, you notice that the Shield Marshal does not do anything with their reaction. All right, Efficient Mega Raptor is going to delay its turn until after its rider. All right, so Stack, what do you do? All right, got to make this nature check to okay. ride, right? Yes. The nature really check good. is a 15 against this Mega Raptor. Beautiful. All right, the Mega Raptor will take one one action that you tell it to on its turn. So what do you want it to do on its turn? Uh, yeah, we're going to ride up as far as its speed. And mm -hmm. then I guess ready the uh, like lasso action, I guess. Is that the uh, yeah yeah it's, it's yeah it's gonna be a trip attack so yeah yeah, yeah the trip attack okay um so then your turn would end its turn would come up it would start riding towards uh the target with its 40 speed and go ahead and target it and then use trip attack from the um action dashboard oh I see it
All right. Uh, you have uh, grabbed it. And mm. now on your next turn, you can get down and start tying it up. Well done. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. He tries his best Shuni impression. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> that brings us to Scared Mega Raptor, who um, will move to underneath Jeremy. And then I gotta add grab to this <coughs> dino. Um, Sorid baby dinosaur is going to. I think seeing that people are getting tied up, it is also gonna run for it. So it's gonna run uh, three times. It's gonna stride over here. All right, Jeremy is up. He uh, looks at the the critter. He's uh, a regular citizen. He has no business being here. Um, he is going to go ahead and try to command his mount. Uh, let's see. Uh, he does, successfully. Um, and he's going to tell it to, uh, I guess, ride up to sword, uh, and then sorted, and then it's going to go ahead and, um, ready the trip, pass to the raptor. Raptor's going to ride off. Uh, 40 feet. Alright. That would put him within 30 feet of the thing. So he'll go ahead and target. And then let's see if he's able to trip this guy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 15. He failed by... Uh, well, he failed. Uh, so... Upon failing an attempt to lasso, uh, the repercussions of that is um, if you miss, it is one additional action to pull the lasso back in, spool it up, and get it ready to, to throw again. Um, if you critically fail on the uh, range strip attack, uh, it is uh, two action thievery to untangle your lasso. So you don't want that to happen. Um, all right. So Thin Clockwork Horse is up. Uh, who is Thin Clockwork Horse working for? Uh, Vulture. All right, Vulture, you were able to get a successful action in there. Where did you want it to stride to? Um, there's no honor among thieves. I'm going to go this way. Uh, which way? To the oh, right. Oh, oh, to the right? Okay. So you have that move 40... Uh, to there. Alright. Are you within 30 of it? No, it is 40 feet away right now. Alright. Uh, heading into the next round. Does anybody who's, uh, just watching want to try to do anything useful or shady, or just watch it happen? Just that would watch. Be, just watch? Okay. I'm uh, just cheering for Jeremy. Alright, fair enough. All right, let's see. Uh, Spunky Shield Marshal will go ahead and try to do a crafting check. Oh, shit. All right, so I believe you could queue up two two commands when you do a command like that. So with a critical. Um, so she will just tell it to move after this thing. And then she will... And it's two... Is it two actions to... It's two actions to ready one action, right? Or is it one action to ready, but then you... Ah, why can I never remember this? Hold on. Uh, buff under 2B. All right. Uh, readying is two Pac-Mans. All right, so she can't ready an action because she's got to respool the, um, the lasso. So then that will be her turn. Okay. Uh, and then this thing is going to ride over uh, twice towards that dinosaur. Vulture, you're up. So I, I looked up Command and Animal, by mm -hmm. the way. There mm -hmm. isn't any critical success oh. result of it, but um, if you've succeeded, mm -hmm. you can also spend multiple actions to Command an Animal to perform that number of basic actions. Oh, okay, 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 okay. You could spend all three actions commanding it to command All right, so she would have spent two time. two actions for two strides and then one action to spool the, the last one. I don't one. know if you need to do a success for each. I don't know. Okay. Alright, so Vulture, uh, 
on your second action, you are able to command your mount. Where are you trying to get it to go? What do you... There, and you're going to use... Uh, you have one last action. Do you want to do anything with it, or...? I can't read anything, unfortunately. Correct. So. Okay. All right. In that case, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, the calm is up. It just kind of looks around, shrugs. This will be okay. Uh, Ditsy is up. It's just going to run and hide over in this corner. But it can't actually hide because you all can see it. Uh, Shallow is up. It is going to try and run away from this lady again. Uh, it'll get to about here. Uh, there we go. All right, stack to you. All right, uh, I guess we gotta tie up this the brachiosaur. Uh, what is it? A athletic. Um, or? so it's one action to dismount, oh, right. and then it would be two actions, uh, thievery to start tying it up. All right. Okay. Uh, so. A failure. Can I hear a point? Or? Uh, yeah. So the the DC to tie them up uh, is a 15. So that is just shy. Really roll. Done. And a critical success on this would count as two successes. So 21. That is one success. All right. Okay. Uh, play would pass to your raptor, who's just going to idle, hang out. Uh, this guy sees that trouble's coming. Uh, he is going to run up here. All right. Uh, Jeremy is up. All right. Jeremy's going to try and handle this animal. You can do this, Jeremy. Believe in yourself. Okay. Here we go. Command animal. Eleven ain't gonna do it. He will try again. Nope. He'll try one more time. The raptor's I getting you, Jeremy. more and more frustrated with him. Uh, nothing. Nothing. All right. None of them are a critical failure though, so so that's good. Um, all right. Then his raptor does nothing. Uh, well, actually, it's a little skittish, so it's going to run over to the corner. Uh, Thin Clockwork Horse. Uh, you commanded it to chase down that thing right there, so it's going to start heading in that direction. Alrighty. Yep. Top of round three. Uh, Spunky Shield Marshal getting frustrated. Going to try to start up that, uh, that there horse. Uh, here we go. All right, that's a success. Uh, how far is it? 70 feet. Might just be enough. All right, so she's going to tell it to move forward. She's got her lasso ready, and then she's going to ready it. They're going to move forward 40 feet. And then from there, it is 30 feet. So she will try an athletics on it. Uh, here we go. Two trip. Oof. Uh, unfortunately, that is a miss. That is her turn. Play goes to Vulture. All right, Vulture. You got two of them just, like, hiding in the corner here. Mm -mm. But this, uh, this janky rental horse is just not responding. All right, uh, you get it to once again roar to life, and uh, it will accept a command from you. You have, uh, you could spend your third Pac-Man to give it another command, or you could do something else with your third Pac-Man. Uh, I'm gonna do it again. Mm -hmm. go, try and go to. Uh, okay, I think if it's the same way as commanding an animal, once you succeed the one time, you could pump as many actions as you want. So you wouldn't have to make the, the second success. So you could just say, you're gonna you're gonna tell it, spend two two actions doing this, essentially. 
Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Play passes to Calm. Calm is like thinking to itself, if I get tied up quickly, this will be over. That's nice. Uh, Ditsy is going to look around, uh, see that someone's coming, but that there's somebody else there. It's going to actually just hang out there for the turn. All right. Shallow is up. It does not want to get caught by this lady. Uh, it's going to move here, and then here, and then it'll run here. Okay. Um, stack, you're up. So you need to two more successes. They're two actions each. The DC 15 to tie this baby up. I don't know if you're muted or you AFK or. Oh, sorry, it's muted. No worries. All right. Thievery. Okay, that is a success. You have one Pac Man left. If you would like, you can start the last tie down, um, okay. but you would not finish it until your next turn. Okay, we could start the last one. All right. Is this another thievery? Uh, yeah, but you wouldn't roll until your next turn. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. Efficient is just chilling. Uh, all right. This little guy. Uh, man. Um, he's gonna go and he's gonna run over by this one. They're gonna huddle together. All right. Jeremy's up. Jeremy sees that there's one nearby. He just gotta get this damn thing to do what he needs it to do. So he's gonna go ahead and roll a command animal. doesn't work. He will try again, refusing to give up. There you go. All right. And then, unfortunately, he can't ready an action, so he'll just put two into it. It says, just get all up on that guy. All right. The scared Mega Raptor doesn't want to, but it does what it's told, and it's just going to be right over here, leaping over it. Uh, lands on the other side, ready to go. All right, Thin Clockwork Horse is up. You can command it twice. Where do you want it to go, um, Lex? Well, there's one that just came closer towards me. Correct. <laughs> can, I, can I just about face and go after that one? Uh, Yeah, I mean, he hasn't tried to rope it yet. So technically, you know, this wouldn't be considered foul play. Unless there's real Jeremy stands in the in the crowds. They might, uh, might be upset about it. Yeah, I don't care about them. Okay. Uh, so where you currently are, it's within... 35 feet so unfortunately 35, you would have closer. to move yeah, yeah you still have to move the horse closer uh so but yeah this is the horse's turn so it can move closer. so do you want to just pen it in like on the other side like this yep okay uh jeremy looks over at you and he says uh it if you don't mind this is my dinosaur <laughs> no response uh, oh damn all right <laughs> Uh, this shield marshal, oh man, she looks over and she sees that stack's almost done. She just lets out a slew of curses. These guys right here doesn't want to look like a quitter in case this gets back to the friends at work. Um, all right, so she will try to do a crafting check. Lisa put in a good show here. All right, she's going to put all three of her actions in to uh, riding over to these, these last two babies. Their turn comes up. And they ride over there. Uh, Vulture, what are you doing? Uh, we're going to lasso this poor thing. Okay. Mm. Mm. Wow. Well, we're getting close to the end of the session, so I'm going to use the hero point. Okay. Uh, I believe an 18 would... Let's see, this thing's reflex is uh, plus 9, so it's a passive 19. You uh, so you're trying to hit a 19 oh, here. 16. Oh, shit! Okay. Um, let's see what rodeo-related injury there is. <clears throat> um, you hit an ally <laughs> to you, or an ally adjacent to the target. Uh, sprain until healed you're clumsy. Um, I could see that. I could see like a... Um, a, a servo being tweaked too hard as you're just going going a little too hard on roping a baby. 
So yeah, you get clumsy too until you receive some healing. All right. Uh, anything else from Vulture? It's one. Uh, it's was... one attempt. Then it's another action to roll. You could just, you could try again because uh, three actions. Since you did no no you so succeeded wait, sorry so you rope? succeeded so yeah, yeah. You, you roped it now it's one action to dismount but then it's two actions to tie it so you could start the tie down this turn if you wanted to and now do that okay so uh you hop down from the horse uh a bit clumsily and then uh this guy is grabbed all right and that would be your turn play fastest to calm he's just chilling uh ditzy sees that there's trouble coming um ditzy is going to attack the horse <laughs> they've had enough of this shit um so they're gonna use clobbering charge um it strides up to its speed it ends its movement with the melee reach of an opponent it makes a skull strike against them possibly stunning the target yeah you going down horse um here we go uh, the horse is hit, but not critically. Holy shit. The horse takes 13 points of damage. Uh, infuriated by being forced into gladiatorial con uh, combat and taken away from its mama, it is going to map uh, Skull Bash the horse uh, and miss. All right. Um, Shallow is up. Uh, let's see. Shallow is tied up. It's not liking it too much. Um, let's see. Shallow is going to lash out at either uh, Jeremy or Vulture. Jeremy's up in a horse, though. I feel like he's kind of leaning down, though. Yeah, I'll do odd or even. So odd, it's Jeremy. Even, it's going to be Vulture. Um, even. Okay, so Vulture. It's just going to, while grabbed, uh, go nuts trying to attack you. It's just going to go three attacks, just burning them up. All right. It's got nothing. Stack, you're up. You right. atten essentially get two attempts here uh, to finish this up. All right. There you go. Um, and with that, the... Uh, the tie-down competition is ended. Yep, the small, lanky shuni lifts up the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, people cheer. Um, the spunky shield marshal looks over um, and nods to you uh, in respect. Uh, Jeremy uh, is sad because he really needed that 10 gold, but he is clapping. Uh, anything from, uh, from Vulture? Uh, just trying to regain his balance. Oh, fair enough, fair uh, enough. All right. So you have, yeah, you have about, you know, 15 minutes or so to get ready for the next event or however long the next event is as you guys head back over to the sides. Um, stack the deck. What was your, uh, rodeo name? Uh, oh, man. Um, his name is, uh, Tower. His name's Tower? Yeah. Okay. All right, so they say, uh, and the winner of Amateur After Dudes tie-down competition is Tower, the top hat wearing shoony. Uh, and everyone cheers. Uh, and then the uh, the hot rodeo clown gives you uh, a blue bottle cap and a purse of ten gold. Thank you. All right, and then they remove all the baby dinosaurs and they reset the map. All right, so Vulture needs some healing assistant. He sprained something something fierce while I was doing that. Who's like, in the possession of a blue bottle cap, guys? Very nice, very nice. Well, well done. Like I'm a natural. All right. All right. Next up, next up is the um. Uh, steer wrestling. So discretion and Ketrin, uh, you are participating in this. All right. Any last minute entries into this one? Uh, in the interim, when Jeremy comes back and like he looks downtrodden, 
can I use my quick alchemy to say, hey, it looks like it went r rough for you. It looks like you could maybe use something to cheer you up. And I do like a sleight of hand trick, essentially. But mm -hmm. like using my quick alchemy, I hand him a flay leaf joint. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll me a secret um, check. Um, okay. Do a performance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my poor day. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, there it is. Oof, God. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, thank, thank you, ma'am. I'll take anything I can get. It's, it's hard times. Oh, you sweet boy. And then he, then he lies right to your face. He says, I need this money to buy medicine for my sick mama. Of course you do. Of course you do, honey. Mm. All right. He and Polite Citizen intend to enter the steer wrestling events. Oh. All right. Do you have anything for crafting, Bella? <laughs> for crafting. Yeah, I, here you go. Hold on. Um, oh, my by. God. There's drugs for everything. It's incredible. Yeah, I have drugs, I have drugs for all of the things. Um, this might... Uh, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not sure if this is actually going to help you on this event, because there are drawbacks to all of the mutagens, for the most yeah, part. We'll take a look at it. Here you go. You're gonna want a cognitive mutagen. Which one are you? Are you the goth girl? <laughs> yeah, yes, the goth girl. This is uh, Isabel of Nidal. Did it? Uh, did it? I tried to drop it onto your token. Did it land? Uh, you should have cognitive mutagen moderate. If not, mm. can you like separate from the horse? I feel like that's probably what's uh, causing the issue. So I, I cannot. Crash Gem, do you know how to move this potion to their sheet, or can you just account for the fact that they <laughs> oh, don't yeah, trust yeah, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you just use it, we just apply the effect to them, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, just use it, and then we can drag the effect onto the sheet. Okay. Well, I want to see what it does. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to gain a plus two to Arcana Crafting, Lore, Occultism, but you're going to take a minus two penalty to your weapon attacks, unarmed attack rolls, athletics checks, acrobatics oh, checks, okay, uh, and your, here, and your yeah. bulk will be reduced by four. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nah, unfortunately it's not viable. Can't have everything. This horse is... Okay, there we go. Alright, thanks. Uh, not this time, unfortunately. Alright. So, they uh, they have you guys line up, and then they uh, they go ahead and they whoop, they march out the uh, the dinosaurs. Let me go grab them for you. There we go. Um, I'll end this combat. I feel like the mounts, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too weird. Like, I much prefer mm. mounts just turning oh. into, like, motorcycles, but I don't know. One in four chance of getting it to do what I want. Ah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so. It was unfortunate that turn order put Vulture and Mount so far away from each well, other. Well, you could have, you could have held to, um, to go right before your mount, since your mount was at the very bottom. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, all right. So here we go. We roll you guys in, and then they say, uh, "All right, next up in the amateur afternoon, we've got steer wrestling. Now, originally known as bulldogging, uh, this involved cows, but you all know how cows—they just don't do so well here in Arkansas. We got these fine dinos though, and they'll do the trick. Just watch out." A lot of broken bones in this competition because these bad boys ain't babies. They're going to be fighting back, fighting for their lives. Um, and you do notice that they uh, may have been given some drugs because these dinosaurs look like they're fucking out of their minds. <laughs> like, not like that, not like in real life that they would ever do something like that. But like, this is a fantasy game, right? So in this fantasy game, they gave drugs to these animals to make them act crazy during this event. So, yeah, anyways. Uh, they put a rubber band around their testicles. Yeah, they never <laughs> mistreat animals in such a competition in real life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this rodeo is uh, completely fabricated. There's no such actual thing, really, in real life. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and be begin the encounter. All right, capable. 
Did you say rubber band around the testicles? Oh yeah. They Have do you ever been to a rodeo? Oh, they do so much no. stuff to piss these things off. It's horrible, dude. It's horrible. All right. Anyways, they can't. Th this guy says in a, in an office style like cutscene where he's talking to the camera. He says, "Jokes on them. I keep my testicles inside my body." Uh, and then cut, it cuts back to the uh, to the action. All right. Um. Yeah. I mean, Capable's like, you know, fuck it. Let's let's do this thing. I'm here to I'm here to I'm here to fight. I'm here to entertain. So he's going to take a stride action, and then he's going to use a clobbering charge. And he's just gonna he's just gonna charge polite citizen in the saddle. This ain't his first rodeo. Oh yeah. Right. Anyways, um, here's the attack. Oh no! <laughs> okay, so he rushes forward, uh, head lowered, and just dumb luck. Uh, the horse uh, just kind of goes and like turns, and the attack misses. All right. Play fastest to Ketron. Ketron, look at this. It's already a dinosaur. You don't even have to go after him. <laughs> uh, now, remember, so, you have to jump from the saddle into onto the dinosaur. So that means you need to perform a leap action. Um, normally, leaping from a horse is either not allowed because they don't like anything cool or fun in Pathfinder, or you have to have like 16 feet. I don't fucking know. But leap is a single Pac-Man. You take a careful short jump, you can leap up to 10 feet horizontally if your speed's at least 15 feet. Uh, or up to 15 feet horizontally if your speed is at least 30 feet. So for this mini game, I would allow you to command the mount to move, then you treat them the movement of the mount, then use your readied action to leap, essentially. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have a moving start, um, you don't go very far uh, at all. Um, so uh, let's see. If you um, if you do, you can leap horizontally. Um, yeah, I think it's like a it's like a standing leap. You could just get right next to it and just leap out of it that way um, if you wanted mm -hmm. to. Okay. Now, if you have any feats or skills or abilities that give you bonuses to jumping, they would come into play here. Okay. And I believe you I'm... can jump a greater distance with an athletic skill check. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna start by just moving my animal. Okay. So I'm gonna crafting. Make a crafting check. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is a success. Um, you can give it one command, and then you would have two Pac-Mans left that you could ready a leap if you wanted to. Okay. Oh, my animal actually moved next. So then, yes. All right. I will. Uh, I will do that. I will command it to move here next right. to this thing, and then I will ready an action to leap. All right. Give me that uh, athletics check to leap onto it. It's uh, you're very close. It's only going to be a DC ten. All right. Uh, so you transfer from your mount to this aminal. Um, everyone nearby is sad because it would be bad manners to try and steal your dinosaur now that you have interacted with it. All right, and that is your turn. That brings us to this grand um, Pachyosaurus. Uh, grand Pachyosaurus sees that there's some some business going on here. It's uh, it's eyeballing the scene. It's gonna go ahead and move here. And then, uh, yeah, discretion. You see it lower its head, and it's going to uh, come barreling towards you with clobbering charge. Uh, here we go. So here is the attack roll. And a miss. Now it's right next to you. All right. Dirty Clockwork Horse is up. It is going to delay until after discretion. So discretion, you're up. Alright, well, time to leap. Okay. Athletics, and I mean, I can just be in any of my four squares? Or... Uh, yeah, I feel like you're on everything. I don't know if that's officially how riding works, no, no but idea, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll just roll and... Well, that seems good. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you leap from, uh your mount onto it so that was only one action you have two actions left the next thing you need to do um 
is an athletics to grapple the creature. I will grapple the creature. All right. It's a normal grapple. Um, yeah, you would target it, and then you would just hit uh, grapple. All right, so that is one success. The creature is now grabbed. And then you would need another success to pin the creature. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that with MAP, so... Mm -hmm. uh... Right, because if you fail, or if you critically fail, um, the creature's going to escape. And you have to yeah. start the whole process over again, so... So I'll just be like, I got you now! And I'll, <laughs> I'll glare at it with my uh, intimidating glare so that I don't need to speak its language, of course. Mm. And I'll try and demolinize this creature. Oh, very nice. Next time. Okay. Um, well, oh, I have to select myself too. Uh, whatever. Okay, I'm just gonna click the mobilize manually Here, because I'll, the I could game... sl slide you out to the side so you don't grab the dinosaur, I guess. There you go. Yeah, see if it doesn't now. Aha! Aha! Alright, so it is frightened one. And I'm doing this all with Panash now. All right, your mount just sits there and doesn't do anything. Uh, play passes to Flowery. Uh, Flowery sees that uh, there's a lot going on over there. Um, the drugs pumping through its veins. Uh, it is going to uh, move and charge to attack Discretion, who is the closest uh, closest target. While Discretion is trying to deal with this other dinosaur. Uh, here comes a clobbering charge. Uh, here comes a skull strike. Uh, 21's a hit, but not a critical hit. Uh, so here is damage. Uh, here we go. What is forceful, man? The more dangerous is you build momentum. Um, so the more you hit with it, the better. Oh, that's wild. I think it's like does a bit more damage. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. All right, so 16 points of damage as it comes barreling uh, into your side as your attention is currently on tying up Grand Packy. Uh, play passes to Scared Mega Raptor. Scared Mega Raptor doesn't want anything to do with this, but there are uh, there is a target right here. So Jeremy is going to whisper sweet nothings into this dinosaur's ears, tell it about his sick mama, and he is going to go ahead and do a command animals check. Uh, let's see, that is not going to work. He'll do another one. Just needs to get close. Come on. Hey, there you go. All right. Um, and then he can't afford to ready an action there, so... He'll just tell it two times to just move to the other side of that. Then its turn comes along, and it's going to, I guess, just push through these... Uh, these horses allied to it? I mean, they all work together. Oh, yeah, it just moved diagonal. My bad. Um, so it'll move and move again over to here. All right. As it moves past Grand uh, Pachyosaurus, Grand Pachyosaurus is going to... Uh... Oh, shoot. All right. Maybe next time. All right. Uh, play will pass to Sentimental Clockwork. Sentimental Clockwork will delay its action till the end. Uh, that means Straight Edge is up. Straight Edge, he held the pills under his tongue. He never took any drugs. He's going to run away, because fuck all this. Uh, Alright. Polite Citizen is up. <coughs> so polite that they would never, never steal your, uh, your dinosaur. They're going to go ahead and try to... Uh, command this guy. So, here we go. Uh, let's see, command animal. Go. Nope. Try again. I mean, it is amateur hour. They're trying the best over here. People hard up. Just trying to make a buck. Tank gold is a lot of money. 
It's like $2,000. Um, all right. So she critically fails all three times. Um, I believe if you critically fail, you get bucked off your mounts. So, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, it says the animal misbehaves or misunderstands and it or takes some other action to turn by the GI. Yeah, in the in the challenge it says if you critically fail, you get oh, okay, yeah, yeah. A challenge, yeah. Yeah, so she is uh she is knocked prone and then by the first one, then she would have uh <laughs> so she wouldn't have even gotten to make those other checks. So she gets knocked prone, then she stands up and then she climbs back on. And then that would be it. So she wouldn't even get those other checks. What a mess. All right. The horse is angry and just sits there and doing nothing. Top of the round. Capable is up. All right. Katrin. Capable does not want to be tied up. It knows what you're about and it's not happy. It is going to try and clobber you with its skull. So here we go. Uh, 23 is going to hit. Here's some damage. Ow. Uh, a gentle eight, uh, but it's going to use this sh sudden shove that I forgot to use uh, on its la the, the last dinosaur. Um, so since it damaged you, uh, it uh, attempts to dig in and flings its head up, shoving its foe away. Um, so it's going to do an athletics check against your fortitude DC. So here's its athletics check. This would be minus five because of map, I believe, but a nat 20. Um, so it pushes you 10 feet away, uh, and knocks you prone. Uh, so you get tossed up and away, and then are prone. All right, and then, with that, uh, since you asked, I have to check, but these, yeah. you're trying to beat this guy's fortitude, mm -hmm. so yeah, you're trying to hit a 21 right now because of the fear, so yeah, that would be too far. Alright, 21 plus 4, that would mean 1 in 4 chance of a crit fail on a minus 5. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, alright, so as you attempt to do this per the challenge, uh, you, you try to take it from grapple to prone, uh, it lashes out at you, breaking the hold and forcing you to start all over. Good. All right. Uh, also, I think it's frightened would have ended at the end of its turn, uh, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, anything else from discretion? Um, we can I can leap back on it, right? Um. That's not an attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not an attack. Wow. Let X that way back. Ooh, 14, uh, it's just out of the 15 that you need to kind of leap onto it. Well, you're right next to it, so it would actually be a 10, because you're not going any kind of distance. So, yeah, yeah. So, you just kind of hop and grab onto it, uh, more symbolic than anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Austin coaches. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're just kind of laying claim to your dinosaur. Yeah. All right. Um, the source just idling, no big deal. Flowery is up. All right. Flowery sees that you are distracted but that this guy is trying trying some nonsense here. So, it is going to... Um, yeah, it's just going to attack him. That's, that seems like a good thing to do. Alright, it's going to target him, and then it's going to use Skull Strike on Jeremy. 15 is going to hit. Yeah, bear. He takes 10 points of damage. He is knocked unconscious, so he would then, I guess, fail his sudden shove uh, attempt. Maybe? I don't know how he could pass it if he's unconscious, but, um, yeah. And then uh, he'll just be tossed over here. All right. Scared Raptor throws up its hands like, I didn't want any part of this. Um, but Flowery is pretty pissed, so it's going to go ahead and attack the, the Raptor now. Uh, and hits. It's going to damage the raptor. Uh, the raptor's going to take 10 points of damage. The raptor, already very frightened uh, by nature, is now like, what the hell is even happening here? And then, fueled by drugs, Flowery is going to attack one last time with map. Fishing for a crit. It misses. Alright. Jeremy is down and out, dying on the ground. 
uh, scared Mega Raptor is going to make a run for it. <clears throat> All right, let's see. It's a 20 foot wall. Can he make it? Mm, nope. These aren't these aren't the kind of jumpy. These aren't jumpy uh, raptors. All right, he just runs away. Okay. Uh, Straight Edge is going to continue to uh, kind of stay as far away from everyone as possible in the corner. And Sentimental Clockwork does nothing. Back to the top of the round. Polite Citizen's dead. Capable is up. All right. Capable looks around. <laughs> um, and then Capable is going to make a run for it. Uh, let's see. They're going to run this way. And then this way. And then this way. All right. Um, Katrin, you're up. Okay. So how far can I jump now? <laughs> oh, let's see. With the long jump? Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. High jump lets you go, um, you stride, you make a vertical leap, attempt a DC 30 athletics check, oh my god, to increase the height of your jump. Uh, if you don't stride at least 10 feet, you automatically fail, but you don't have to do that. And you get to the do it as one rules. action. Oh, are new these the new rules? rules? No, those are the old ones. Oh, okay, what's the new rules so the for? the new ones are basically that, except that if you fail, then you still go the distance of your board. Hmm. So it's not. So you can't nothing, basically. You can't go up to thirty feet anymore. You would just unless you make that thirty DC thirty, but you would go as far as your check mm -hmm. went. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then your right. long jump is um, a a little bit less than the the high jump. It's a DC twenty. Um, and okay. it's yeah, you're trying to leap at least twenty feet. So. Okay. Okay. So then, excuse me, I only have. I can only move 20 feet. Let's, mm. let's try it. I'm gonna... I'm gonna move. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move. And then am I close enough? Oh, no, not quite. So I mean, I guess if you nat 20 the uh, the check, you could you could maybe leap that far, but... Uh, well, I will... Oh, uh, DC 20 to leap 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. So you're just going to move yeah. up on him? I'm going to raise my shield. Ooh, <laughs> okay. I feel like he might attack me. Fair enough. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to raise my shield, and I'm going to yell at him. Oh, shit. Okay, that's all it takes. He's ready He's ready to throw down. All right, Grand is up. Um, Grand doesn't like you on it. This is bad. <laughs> So Grand is going to go ahead and try and attack uh, Discretion. Here we go. Uh, yeah, 21. Here's the damage. And then it's going to use Sudden Shove on you. All right. And then it's going to make an Athletics check at map. So let's see. This would be at a plus 6. It's a reaction, so I, would it be at map? Oh, what a great question. Would it be at map? It's on the same turn, but it is a reaction. Hmm. Why would they make it a reaction and not a Pac-Man follow-up like some of the other stuff? So yeah, I want to say since it's a reaction, it would be outside of that. Alright, in that case, this is just going to be an athletic check straight. Here we go. Uh, so 25 for against mm -hmm. discretion. Is that going to be a success? Uh, normal success. Normal yeah. success. Okay. So on a normal success, uh, you are pushed back five feet. So just essentially you're no longer considered engaged with the dinosaur. Uh, now mm -hmm. with map, it will try to uh, hit you again. It's going to miss. And then with its last action, it's going to try to get away from you. So it's going to go this way. All right. That'll be its turn. Discretion to you. Yeah. I'll choose not to do a reaction on it this time. Hmm. Yeah, but that's the one that I was grappling, so I don't actually have to jump on it, right? Cor so correct. Will... Yeah, because you started with that one. You could finish with that one. 
-hmm. Unless somebody else here. swooped in and stole it from you. And I'll try and grab it first. Okay. All right. And you just try to grab it. It just flexes hard. It doesn't want to be grabbed. Yep. That's a crit. <laughs> All right, it screams in dinosaur, and the and the captions say, "You don't have enough badges to tame me." It starts flipping yeah, out. I think I'll have to give up soon. That's my turn now. Okay, uh, play will pass. Uh, crit failed, so it can choose to grapple me or, or knock me prone. Uh, yeah, sure, it'll try to knock you prone. This is what a trip. No, it just happens because I crit failed. Oh, does it have to use a reaction or anything? It's part of my failure. Oh, it'll definitely knock you prone. <laughs> it'll definitely knock you prone. All right. Uh, horse doesn't do nothing. Flowery is up. Flowery looks around the battlefield, uh, sees that there's Ketron right there. It's going to use a stride action to move back, and, like a wind-up car. And then it's going to charge forward with its remaining two Pac-Mans using a clobbering charge. Uh, here we go. Uh, 21. I don't know why. Oh, 21 is going to miss. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is its whole action economy. Scared Mega Raptor is going to continue to hide from the battle. Uh, Straight Edge is going to continue to hide from the battle. Sentimental is up. It's really just the two of you because the two NPCs are just fucking out of this. Um, mm. Play passes back around uh, to Capable. All right, capable as you predicted. It paused at the ground and then it charges forward with a clobbering charge. Uh, here we go. Oh my! Um, that's gonna hit, but not a critical because you had your shield up. Nice. And I will shield block. Okay. As my reaction. All right, here's the damage coming at you. It is 11, and then it will try the athletics check as its reaction to try and knock you away. Uh, 26 against your fort, I believe is what they're targeting yeah. here. So that's probably a success. Yeah, so it's a success moving you back five feet. Okay. All right. And <clears throat> with its last action, it will make a map attack with its 10 foot reach. Uh, here we go. And critically miss. Okay. Um, I'm going to remove these other combatants from... Oops. I removed Ketrin. My bad. Uh, let's see. Quick question. On mm -hmm. my shield block, I don't... I use... I absorb the hardness, which is seven. Mm -hmm. And then... Is it that both me and the shield will take the remaining four? Or do I split them? I take two, the shield takes two. I don't remember. Oh, the shield takes the the amount that... Um, it's... it's if you have shield block activated, I believe it will calculate the damage to the shield automatically. Oh, so I just hit damage. Yep, and it should it should just apply it. Oh, block. There we go. Yep. Block. Okay. Yep. And then it has its own little mini character sheet on your character sheet for your shield, which is just kind of wild. It didn't actually do anything. Oh, but... okay. Mm. Let's see. Hold on. Hmm. At least it didn't do anything to my shield. I think it gave me damage. Um, all right, you snap your shield to ward off a blow. It prevents you from taking damage the amount of the shield's hardness. Uh, yeah. You and the shield take any remaining damage, possibly breaking or... Okay, so each of you would take the leftover damage. You wouldn't split okay. the leftover damage. Yep. So I'll just take it off of my shield. Okay, okay cool. Okay. Do all it right, automatically, cool. Uh, she said it didn't ca take off yeah. the hit points of the shield, even though she hit block, but I don't know. All right, Ketrin, you're up. <clears throat> okay. Um, I have to target Capable. Uh, Capable's one you started with, so that's the one you gotta, you gotta finish with. Unless okay. you want to start all over getting back on a horse and jump, yeah. jumping onto a dinosaur and all that jazz. I will, I will step. All right. And I will grapple. All right. Wait, let me target him first. Target. And grapple. Okay. And this is going to be the last round, and you have a, a D... 
uh, three you could spend as well, but a 27 yeah. okay. is going to succeed. But, uh, now nah, there's no way that three could pump it up to a critical success. So, uh, yeah, you have grapple. Yeah. I am going to do it again. At Ooh, Matt. okay. It's, which is fine. So, is I'll the, make it. the goal of a second one to knock it prone? Cause... Uh, yeah, yeah, the goal is to knock it prone. So if you take a trip and it'll do it against that. Okay, first oh, I'm gonna. Matt. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Zero you could hit trip. Map. Okay. Because I imagine that every flex DC is a little lower. It is than one that lower box. than its four. Oh, only one? Yeah. Okay, mm. so with a D3, you would not be able to succeed, um, but and you didn't get a critical uh, failure, so you maintain the grapple, but you don't knock it prone okay. yet. Okay, what if, what if I used my D3 and succeeded at a cost? Is Ooh, that possible? Let's see. So you got a 15. If you got three of them, bring it up to a. 18 uh but you need to get to a 21 so no you would not be okay. able to no. all right okay all right let's see grand is up grand sees that you haven't given up on it and it hasn't given up on you um it's gonna like a wind-up car it's gonna move back uh then it's gonna charge you in uh using clobbering charge uh here we go and and it, oh, oh shit. Okay. Uh, Q bowling pin sound effect. 32 points of damage. Max damage, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Uh, with your defeat, uh, a bell is rung. And Ketrin, uh, they, uh, they ask, would you, uh, would you back out now for half the pot and victory? Or do you want to stay in for the full 10 gold? I mean, do I still get the token? Oh, yeah, you would still get the token. Yeah, then I'll back out. <laughs> okay. And I, I will go uh, heal uh, this direction. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, so there is, there's a general kind of mix of cheers and some boos as you, uh, as you accept the default victory instead of going all in. Um, but... You do receive five gold as a prize, and you receive a blue bottle cap that you can now use to get into the exclusive Longhorn Lounge. Uh, Jeremy is uh, resuscitated, and Polite Citizen's body is removed from the field. And that is where we will leave off for the week. Two of you could now bring two other people uh, into the Longhorn Lounge. So... You are registered for Barrel Guard, as well as an additional event of uh, riding around uh, through barrels, which there's literally just a series of checks. There's no cool moving miniatures around, anything like that for that one. Um, and then the uh, mounted marksman. So you guys will knock those out at the beginning of next session, or if you feel that two bottle caps is enough, you could, you know, subtly just kind of sneak out the back door. Uh, with your bottle caps um either way um success so far success so far and nobody got killed by dinosaurs which is good all right so i'll bring you guys back to the start map here we go how and much time do we have in between events I, can I continue to heal yes. the stress a little so, bit so so there is um there is about 15 20 minutes between events uh, and then, of course, those are the events themselves, which take about 15 to 20 minutes. So, by the time you got to Barrel Guard, uh, we could argue that about 45 minutes would have gone by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, at least. So, you should be should be pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I will heal discretion again. I will risky surgery you this time. Oof. All right. So, um, next week, we will be playing at our normal time. But then, two hours after our game ends, we will be doing a 12-hour marathon for Extra Life. So, <clears throat> uh, if you are interested in um, being a part of that, uh, helping out, uh, donating, watching the stream, cheering people on, uh, that's going to be happening next weekend. Uh, so just kind of keep an eye out on the Discord or on Twitch or YouTube. There, you know, it'll be it'll be posted up. Um, 
And then I don't think there's too many other announcements that I have. We got the holiday season coming up. We are going to take a whole week off around Christmas from games. Uh, I am glad that everybody was able to play today because um, I, I feel like, you know, I don't want to lose the momentum of uh, the Saturday game with all these holidays and stuff like that. Um, anyone have their own announcements before we adjourn? Um, I believe Red is going to be running some one shots uh, next week for the next week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be having that. All right, sounds good. Uh, all right. Then on that note, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their weekend. Um, I think on the calendar it says that we are not playing games tomorrow, but we are, to the best of my knowledge, playing games tomorrow. Um, I may be streaming it. I know that today's player stream was pretty bad. It went down twice. Um, so now we got three different videos I have to sew together um, for this episode. And the view was not great to begin with. And then when the combat tracker popped up, there was like this narrow sliver of like viewable space. So I am going to have to figure out a better way to uh, to do a player player view just so that there's a nice backup for, for streaming. Uh, anyways, appreciate everybody's patience, uh, as always, as we continue to learn the system and uh, explore uh, Pathfinder and Alkenstar. You guys have some leads. We'll follow up on the rodeo stuff and those other leads next week, and uh, see you next time. Thanks for running. Hmm? Great game, thank you. Yeah. And I put the updated jump in the chat, by the way, that's slightly wrong, but... Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you.